Aleluia. Amazing. Oh, come, let us adore you. Oh, come, let us adore you. Oh, oh, come, let us adore him, Christ. For you alone art faithful. For you alone art faithful. For you alone art faithful. Christ alone. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Will you come, let us adore Him? Oh, come, let us adore Him. Father, we thank you. It remains an honor and indeed a privilege to worship, to give you praise, to learn, to grow, to be built, and to be established. This is your atmosphere, and we are your people. We have come as proof that we trust you. We have come as proof that we love you. We have come as proof that we need you. Breathe upon us tonight that the times we have left in your presence fellowshipping as a body of believers, let it not be a waste in the name of Jesus. We declare tonight that there is the hearing of faith and even the walking of miracles. Let Jesus and him alone be glorified. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. Please be seated. I welcome all who are connecting from all around the world, nation to nation, continent to continent. This is Koinonia. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. And we're happy our Zaria Center is also connecting with us. Blessings to you, dear people of God, in the name of Jesus. Two functions very quickly, and then we'll head straight to the Word of God. Amen. We're honored to have in our midst a very great, great man of God, indeed a veteran of the gospel. Please help me celebrate Apostle Goodheart. Thank you, sir. Blessings to you. Thank you. I love you, sir. We honor you. Thank you. Is this the best you can do for him? Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Truly thank you. Hallelujah. Second, very quickly, is to publicly appreciate my friend and brother. He did something very, very touching. Um, Pastor Nathaniel Bassi, his, his uh, album, Hallelujah, again. You know, um, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know if he's released it yet, but... He sent 1,000 copies to Koinonia, free, completely free, as a seed of love. And um, I just thought that it was, it was truly good to bless him. I'm sure he probably may be connecting. Pastor Nat, thank you. We love you. Thank you for this sacrifice. Indeed, it will be hallelujah again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you ready for tonight? Give me an encounter, oh God, that will change my life. Please lift your voice and pray. Open down my eyes, the Bible declares, that I may behold wondrous things from out of thy law. Are you praying? Let it be from the depth of your heart. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. 
I choose the way of the Lord. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. The Bible declares there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. It says, but the end thereof are the ways of death. It is the Holy Spirit who sustains the ability to guide men into all truth. It says, when he, the spirit of truth is come, he shall guide you into all truth. He shall guide you, guide you, guide you. Step by step, he leads me and I will follow him all of my days as confused as i may look step by step you are leading me and we will follow you all of my days the bible says and your ear shall hear a voice saying this is the way walk ye in it and if you are foolish enough to follow, he promises you that you will find rest. There is rest in his leadership. When the Holy Ghost leads us, the Lord is my shepherd, he says, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. The Bible says he leads me before the quiet waters and he restores my soul then he guides me along the path of righteousness for his name's sake he does it for his name's sake he does it for his reputation he does it as a responsible father as a responsible creator listen to me people of god it pays to respect the leadership of the holy spirit you may not look like it but if you can submit to the leadership of the Holy Spirit, the rabbi of the ages. He's a master at leading men to the place of destiny. In the midst of the confusion, he guides you. He leads you until you find a heaven. Your life becomes a sign and a wonder at the instance of his leadership. He's worth your attention. He leads by his word. He leads by his voice. So every time we gather like this, listen to me. We're not just here to honor a program or to listen to a man. More than that, we are here as proof of our hunger for his leadership. That one moment of a genuine encounter with his word, when that word comes as light, it is able to take you to realms unimagined. This is true. This is not a sermon. God is able to lead men to the place of destiny. Otherwise, why is he God? He's able to lead us. He's able to guide us. Our assignment is to trust his leadership and then to submit to his principles. It is a foolish student who argues with a lecturer. When he guides you, don't change the formula. Be foolish enough to respect what he gives you to the latter. And all that will be left at the other side of your obedience is a sign and a wonder. A tearsome testimony. You will be the first one who even is afraid of your own testimony. It is true. I believe him. I believe his leadership. He does not waste our time now. You have given your attention to things and people of lesser value. It pays to pay attention to him. Give him a chance to turn your life into a sign and a wonder. Don't sit arguing, wondering, can God do something about my life? This is the ancient of days. He's a master at making men. It's not only the heaven and the earth that he makes. He's not only the maker of heaven and earth. He's a maker of men. Ancient words, ever true, they're changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts, 
So let the ancient words. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. It says to stand in the way and to ask for the old path. Please look up. It says wherein is the good way and walk therein and you shall find rest for your soul. But here is the response that people will usually give. We will not walk therein. We went to school. We have our own formula around life. We've been intelligent. We are well traveled. The Holy Spirit comes knocking, beckoning on as many people who can pay attention to him. I will turn you into a sign and a wonder, he says. It's up to you to believe me enough. Take the risk. Believe me and blame me if I don't make you. My spirit is fired up tonight. We'll have a few minutes. But please pay attention to that which I'll be sharing with you tonight. I pray to God bowing my knees this evening and I said, Lord, world over people will be following this conference, be following this meeting. I pray that they will not only follow just to honor a program, but that they will listen to be transformed. Listen to be transformed. Listen to be transformed. You can listen just for information. You can listen because your, your ear happens to be around where sound is being made. But you can listen intentionally for the purpose of transformation. He says, meditate on these things. Paul was teaching his son Timothy. He says, give yourself wholly to them. Leaves you with an assurance that your profiting will appear unto all. He that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully. Are we blessed? The mysteries of the kingdom. The mysteries of the kingdom. I want to share with you two very deep revelations tonight that I believe in the name of Jesus will truly be a blessing to us and will open us up to tremendous dimensions of God's power and grant us the fortitude to produce uncommon, unusual, extraordinary results in the name of Jesus the Christ of God. Praise the Lord. And whilst the word is coming tonight, it will be as it were in Acts chapter 10, that while the Holy Ghost yet spake this, while Peter yet spake these things, the Holy Ghost fell. I want you to be sensitive not only to hear, but to also receive. I believe that there are engracings that will be happening whilst we're listening inside all of the overflows down to the basement outside. Let your attention be wrapped on the word as it comes. Those following from any nation, just pay attention. Lend your destiny this time and let God work wonders in our lives. In the name of Jesus, please write this down. God is a God of patterns. I'd like to start tonight by reminding us and for some bringing it as a new information to your Christian experience that God is a God of patterns. A pattern is a modus operandi. A pattern is a prescribed or authorized methodology. It's a formula. The means of achieving a desired result predictably is called a pattern. God is not only a great God. God is not only a mighty God. He is a God of patterns. Oftentimes we'll see in scripture that he hardly does the same thing twice. When he starts a process, he will reveal it as a dimension of himself and then he will surround it with a spiritual pattern for its continuity. Are we together now? He made the first man, he made the second, the first man and the first woman and never had to put his hand to mold and make a man again. He designed a pattern in them for the continuity of the human race. Are we together now? He did the first planting, the first watering and created a pattern around agriculture that makes for supplies. God is a God of patterns. Patterns are the correct way things are done. Patterns. They are the pathways 
that guarantee predictable outcomes. That means that it is on the strength of patterns that our Christian experiences find predictability and even continuity. In the dealings of God with men, you may want to listen and then write. In the dealings of God with men, please listen. We are not at liberty to invent our way of knowing and following God. When it has to do with walking with God, creativity is not needed. It is obedience and surrender. It's when it has to do with legislating on behalf of the kingdom, then you can bring in your creativity. But as far as following God is concerned, you need obedience and adherence. Men are not at liberty to invent their way of walking with God. There is a prescribed way to walk with God in order to get results and then in order to leave a foot a divine pattern has been adhered to success is proof that a divine pattern has been adhered to blessings to you minister dunsin thank you i love you thank you for coming thank you sir hallelujah success at any level is proof that a divine pattern has been adhered to failure is also proof that a divine pattern has been ignored, violated, or not thoroughly followed. I'll come again. Failure is proof that a divine pattern has been ignored. Way. He is not only truth, he's not only life, he is the way. Are we together now? In Genesis chapter 4. Probably the first authentic representation of a man's willful violation of God's pattern outside of the garden. Genesis chapter 4, please. We'll read very quickly the first seven verses. The Bible says, And Adam knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, the Bible says, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Follow the story, verse 3. It says, and in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. So it's talking about offerings, giving. Five. Verse 4 says, and Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. And then the Bible makes a very interesting statement. It says, and the Lord had respect, regard unto Abel and to his offering. First the man, then his activity. The Bible says, but unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. As a result, Cain was very wrought and his countenance fell. Please keep verse 5. Very interesting statement. There are consequences for violating divine patterns. There are consequences for being and living in ignorance. This is one of it. Frustration. Your Christian experience becomes a plethora of frustrations from one circle of frustration to the other. Cain was sad and angry. Why? Because his life was not producing the kind of result he wanted. Verse 6. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wrought? Why art thou angry? And why is thy countenance fallen? Verse 7 is a very powerful instruction. If thou doest well, that means if you do what you do according to pattern, shall thou not be accepted? And if you do not do well, be careful. Your frustration will lead you to a point where sin lies at your door. Frustration that is prolonged has a consequence. It will push you into all kinds of things. Bitterness, envy, anger. It says, Cain, the cure for all these things that are happening to you is to understand divine patterns because that outcome can also be a possibility in your life. Sin lieth at your door and unto thee shall be his desire and thou shalt rule over him. When you read the other part of the story, the Bible says Cain killed Abel. Divine patterns, if violated, have severe consequences. We're dealing with the mysteries of the kingdom, but it's important for us to understand. Because you see, 
Results in this kingdom do not just happen. Please understand this. Results are very methodical. Results are predictable because they, they happen at the instance of spiritual patterns. Results are not an issue of opinions. They are not just an issue of, um, you know, sociological or tribal or whatever affiliations. Whoever can subscribe to that pattern there is a guarantee. There is an investment of God's integrity upon his patterns. If you're with me, please say amen. amen. Exodus chapter 25. Moses receives an instruction to build a tabernacle in the wilderness. We'll read verse 9 and then we'll jump to verse 40. Exodus chapter 25. It says, according to all that I show you, Moses is receiving an instruction now. After the pattern of the tabernacle, it says, and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so thou shalt make it. So to build the tabernacle in the wilderness, Moses was taken in the spirit to see the tabernacle in heaven. And he said, make sure you sustain that same pattern. And then verse 40 says, and look that thou make them after their pattern, which was shown unto thee, on the mount let me tell you this this is very powerful because this is a principle that is also used in witchcraft and occultism i'm not here to, we're not discussing demonology tonight but let me explain something when someone goes to meet a herbalist please look up and says i want to take a charm or i want to introduce a spirit to my house do you know what happens the victim does not even know what is happening. They conjure spirits. And those spirits reveal the pattern that simulates their current environment. They want to come to your house. They can't come to your house till your house looks like where they currently are. So the native doctor sustains intelligence through divination. By conjuring all the substances, spiritually and physically, that can simulate the current habitation of that spirit. Are we together? You take a token of that atmosphere to your house. Now, whether the spirit is in your house or where it was, it does not know the difference again. Because whether it's in your house or it's in that place, the pattern that makes for his presence is already there. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Hmm. This is how it works. So God is saying, if you want me to feel at home in that wilderness, you must be able to reproduce a pattern where there is almost no difference whether I'm sitting on my throne or I'm with you in that wilderness. Moses, if it's my presence you want to secure, subscribe to my patterns. Are we together now? Mm -hmm. Exodus chapter 40. We'll read verse 16, then we jump to 33 to see the miracle when we adhere to patterns. Exodus 40, let's start from verse 16, then we jump to 33. Please give it to us. Exodus 40, 16. Thus did Moses, according to all that the Lord had commanded him, so did he. Watch this. 33. This was the last instruction being adhered to now. And he read up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging of the court gate. So Moses finished the work according to pattern. The result... 34 the bible says and then a cloud can you imagine that god was watching and never came until the last peg was put according to pattern then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation and the glory of the lord filled the tabernacle 35 the bible says and moses was not able to enter the tent of the congregation because the cloud abode thereon and the glory of the lord filled the tabernacle spiritual patterns there is a pattern for genuine salvation is that true you don't get saved the way you want there is a prescribed pattern for instance romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10 gives us the biblical pattern the pathway to receiving jesus if you receive him any other way you can be sure according to scripture you are not saved are we together you can verify whether an individual is saved. Not just by looking at the individual's personality. You check if the pattern that leads to salvation was adhered to. There is something in um, when 
those who are in manufacturing, there is something called quality control. Am I correct? Quality control insists that the patterns are kept to the letter. So when the products are made, they pass through a quality control department and their assignment is to verify. Was everything done and made correctly? They can detect defections and then send it back and say, no, 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 we cannot send this because this is an indictment on our reputation and our image. Patterns, the spiritual quality control systems that guarantee that what comes out of it has the signature of God. The glory of God. There is a pattern for spiritual growth. We don't just grow anyhow in this kingdom. There is a methodical spiritual approach that was given to the saints that if you administer it like a drug to any spiritual patient, there is a guarantee. We have medical personnel here. We have doctors. And regardless the individual, in most cases when an individual says, I have malaria or I have whatever sickness, the, there, are, there are drugs that have already been designed. Is that true? The doctor or the manufacturer does not have to be there with you. Provided it passed from them or recommended by their intelligence, they know it will work for you. So you don't need to scratch your head wondering, will this work? It's been tested. There is a pattern for spiritual growth. You can know you are growing, not just because you've stayed long in church, not just because you have appointments in church. You can know you are growing if and when you subscribe to the spiritual pattern. And according to scripture, the pattern that is made for growth is called doctrine. If you are not receiving the administration of doctrine, the, the possibility for growth is not there, regardless where you are. Doctrine is the course curriculum that builds the believer into maturity. Are we blessed? There is a pattern for church growth. For instance, a ministry does not just grow. There is a spiritual pattern that makes it happen. A company does not just grow. A business does not just grow. No, there are patterns for it. One of the keys that control it, for instance, is I, if I be lifted up from the earth, it says I will draw men. So the more you hide behind the veil and you allow Jesus to be seen and to be lifted up, there is a promise that he will draw men to himself. There is a pattern for wealth and abundance. Takes more than desire. Takes more than business. Takes more than investments. Takes more than a job to be transgenerationally blessed. There is a spiritual pattern. There is an economic system in this kingdom by which the saints rise. It's not subject to, it has no prejudice attached to it. That whoever like Cain, receiving a warning from God, whoever can subscribe to it with understanding, inevitably will emerge carrying that testimony. There is a pattern for building your faith. If your faith is small, if your faith is weak, you are violating a spiritual pattern that makes for the development of your faith. The Bible says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But faith does not just grow by hearing alone. But ye beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith. You have to know how it comes. You have to know how it grows. You have to know how it is administered. Is God blessing us tonight? There is a pattern for the anointing. This probably is one of the sincere desires for many people, especially in the body of Christ. Do you know, respectfully speaking, probably eight or ten out of people who come uh, seeking prayer, especially those in ministry, what they really want, and, and, and they are very sincere. They will tell me, Apostle, what I desire is the anointing. I want the anointing is in an unusual way, in an unusual degree. Very sincere desire, but there is a pattern. Just because it comes from heaven does not mean it comes anyhow. Even in heaven, there are patterns. You don't walk into the throne room just because Jesus is there. No, there are patterns. You never find angels just roaming around the throne room because it's... It, it, no, 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 no. There is an order. There is an ordinance. There are patterns. Remember, Satan is not there. The construction of heaven 
was done with a pattern. The names of the 12 apostles being the foundation itself. There is a way the anointing comes. There is a way the anointing increases. There is a way the anointing is administered. Just having a desire does not necessarily bring the anointing. There are different levels of the anointing. There are different dimensions of the anointing. Please pay attention. Just because you enjoy a dimension of the anointing does not mean it can do everything in your life. No. Are we together? Spiritual patterns. There is a pattern for activating favor in your life. Favor with God and favor with men. Luke 2.52. The Bible declares that Jesus increased. So we can increase in wisdom, in stature, and the Bible says in favor with God and with men. If you have favor with God alone, like you may have heard me say, you will have encounters, you will have visions, but you will really suffer as far as this life is concerned. You need favor with men. Favor does not just happen. I think one of the misunderstood subjects, not the only one, but one of the many misunderstood subjects in the body of Christ is the subject of favor. For a very, very long time, respectfully speaking, we thought that favor just happens just like that. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. There is an intentional formula for many years, we kept calling breakthrough favor. If it happens only once, it's not favor. It must be repeated to be favor, regardless the surrounding circumstances. Proverbs 13, 15. The Bible says, good understanding giveth favor. Good understanding. That is the mother that bets this child called favor. It says transgression... It's also a pregnant woman that can give birth to something called hardship. Hardship does not just happen. It is a direct product of violating certain laws. Good understanding giveth favor. But the way of the transgressor, the violator of patterns is hard. There is a pattern for building and maintaining relationships. They don't just happen. Is that true? Amos chapter 3 and verse 3, for instance, it says, can two walk together except they be agreed? The word agreed means um, compatible, similarity in viewpoints. That he that wants friends, your fools shall be destroyed. Do not be deceived, the Bible declares, it said, good company. There is a pattern for a model home. It does not just happen. Psalm 112 Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. He said, his seed shall be mighty upon earth. He says, the generation of the upright shall be blessed. The generation, not just the children, the generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches, the next verse says, shall be in his house. And yet his righteousness endures forever. There is a pattern for restoration. There is a pattern for restoration. The possibility of recovery is a reality and, and gone can come back. I prophesied as I was commanded, Ezekiel 37, and he said there was a... Are we together? Yes. There is a pattern for exemption. It can come upon you and make you to testify that there is a lifting up. Is it in your Bible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That a thou behold the reward of the wicked. These are patterns. It is the presence of work of victory if and only when you understand the patterns that this life demands. Safe, but you can have abundant life. Hmm. Are we blessed? He says, I am come, the thief cometh not, John 10, 10, but for to steal, have abundant life. Life overflowing, some versions will say. You only succeed in this kingdom. To the degree to which you build according to pattern. Please pay attention. The Lord is edifying us tonight. I can trust the works of my hands. I can trust my tomorrow. Not just because I'm the one living it out. But because of the patterns I know I am following. 
If you are not following divine patterns, there is no guarantee for success. Even if it looks successful, you will be surprised at the instance at which it will change. There is a way that cement right. Cement right means there is some ray of hope as you look at it. But it's at the end you will know you have been wasting your time. Write this down. Building according to pattern guarantees three things. Very quickly. Building according to pattern guarantees three things. Number one, the glory of God. The manifestation of the glory of God. As we read earlier on in Exodus chapter 40, 16 and then 33 to 35. Building according to pattern secures and guarantees the glory of God. The manifest presence of God. Every time the glory of God shows up in a place in a life, in a ministry, in a family, it comes as an attestation, as a validation that divine patterns have been followed. Please listen carefully. You will never experience the glory of God in your life until divine patterns are kept. Hmm. So if I see the favor of God in my life, if I see extraordinary results in my life, they come not just in honor to my prayer and my request alone. They come as tokens of validation. Proofs that I have walked in keeping with the divine patterns that make for these possibilities. You must trust God for grace to stop shadow boxing. God by this truth is bringing us to a point of mastery where there can be predictability to your Christian experience. Divine patterns securing the glory of God. Moses, you want to see my glory in that tabernacle in the wilderness? There is a way that you can engage my patterns and you will see my glory. Testimonies that happen in church every week is more than just the anointing of a man. There are patterns that are followed. You see, let me tell you this. Creation was designed to honor these patterns. Are you aware of that? That as have hazard as life and living looks, they were designed, it's like they are codes of possibilities. Creation will remain disobedient to you until they find you walking in keeping with this pattern. There are enough men to favor you, but they will not come until the pattern that attracts favor is kept. You will be surprised how easy it is for you to be lifted and yet you remain on the ground for a long time. But the day you find the key, then Esther chapter 2 and verse 15 becomes your testimony. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them, not some, all them that looked upon her to the point where in verse 17 even the king could not resist that charm like grace the bible says the king loved esther above all the women she obtained grace and favor in his sight my head thou exalted like the horn of a unicorn and I am anointed with fresh oil. My head you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn. And I am anointed with fresh oil. I raised this song because I just saw a jar. I just saw a jar with oil dripping on it. I don't know who that grace is for, but whilst you are sitting, I stretch my hands in the name that is above all names. I just spoke about this Esther anointing and I saw a jar. That's why I raised that song. Father, I don't know how many people here who must drink of this grace, but I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus and by the spirit of faith. May that unction come upon your life now. May that grace come upon your life now. Please sit down. The proof of favor is not money. No. The proof of favor is the hearts of men. When God gives you the heart of men, you are really favored. Are we blessed? We must become, as I would always say, spiritual archaeologists. 
like the Magi, looking to the sky to discern signs. What is responsible for results? What is responsible for lifting? I spent my life searching these mysteries of the kingdom, trying to understand the patterns that connect to results. Not wanting to live my life shadow boxing and guessing. There has to be a way out. Please help those who start running now under the anointing. I just saw a vision and I just saw like, it's like light just falling on people. This is what I'm saying. Just help them. We'll continue the teaching, but I just saw this in the spirit. It's, it's, it's an impartation. God is bringing that grace. Please help them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yahweh. 18. 18 people. This is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh Oh yeah yeah say Oh yeah yeah Yahweh Oh yeah yeah say Thou anointest my head with oil and my cup, my destiny, run it over, run it over. I continue to pray this, but I want you to bring this set of people out who are still preaching. There is an unction for speed that is coming on people right now. They will begin to run by the Spirit of God. The Lord is breaking cycles. These are patterns. Bring them out. Tena na katabarato shadeka likapa, sates kabarentes kodi bahashela katos. Speed to your feet, giving you acceleration in life, acceleration in destiny. Please help them. In the name of Jesus Christ, bring them. I want to speak over their life. We are still teaching. Parato shelekete paruziata. You came to church. This is the house of God, the gates of heaven. I decree and declare speed. Speed to destinies, speed to men. I shift you acceleration 10 years in one. Please believe it, believe it, believe it. It says, If you believe, you will see the glory of God. Speed and acceleration to your life in the name of Jesus the Christ of God. In the name of Jesus the Christ of God, all the overflows outside, following from any nation, I decree and declare speed to your destiny speed to your destiny encounter that grace that shift men encounter that grace that can shift businesses speed to your christian experience pray in the spirit in one minute receive it for your life father in the name of jesus acceleration by the spirit for my destiny. Shabbatis, Katapas, Katabakato, Sabretaskia, Shagatabakata, Koto Prontos, Kotobakata. I will hasten my word. I will hasten my word. I will hasten my word to perform. I will hasten my word to perform i will hasten my word give speed to my speakings give speed to my prophecies for all those who are out and under the anointing i declare the same way the holy ghost located you I declare speed speed with results in the name of Jesus the Christ of God some of you are representing families some of you are representing ministries you are representing businesses may that grace speak for you no power in existence will stop you from walking in this anointing 
in the name of Jesus the Christ of God listen speed is one of the dominion systems over time because the unit of destiny is time and everything that lacks time speed is more than progress speed dominion over time in the name of jesus let it be we declared by the spirit of grace you came to church to encounter grace and we prophesy by the god of heaven just like the dear man of God, Minister Nosa sang, now your way is his way to, to, to bring speed to our lives. Everything standing your way, not allowing you to experience speed. I lift my hands to the God of our covenant and I declare it must clear out of the way right now for you. It must clear out of the way now for you. Every enchantment, every divination, every covenant, activities of familiar spirit sitting on your destiny, I will not let you move. In the name of Jesus, I move it for your sake. I move it for your sake. I move it for your sake. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Your name, hey, is your name, breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Just breathe your grace upon me, breathe. Just breathe your grace upon me, breathe. Your hand, my head is your name, breathe, breathe, Lord. Just breathe your grace upon me, breathe. Hallelujah. Who is Jane? I'm hearing a name, Jane. Who is that? Jane. We'll be seated shortly. Jane. Hali Sani Shalam Brakatos Kate Bariata. This person I'm seeing is like an elderly woman. No, this is not a young lady, but I'll pray for you. I will pray for you but please come just a few minutes will be back seated is God wasting your time sir look at me this man look at me the chains that hold the works of your hands I bring judgment upon them now in the name of Jesus the Christ of God I release you by the spirit of grace go and return with testimonies your life will so shift you will wonder and marvel in the name of jesus christ can i pray for you ma i hope you're not embarrassed that i'm calling you in the name of jesus there is a name above all names there is a name above all names madam shout jesus as loud as you can I declare may grace come upon you and I release you by this by this shout in the name of Jesus step into the realms of favor for you and for your family for you and for your family my dear I remove that I'm seeing something that looks like a crown but it's not of God I remove it from your head now this lady out of her life now in the name of Jesus Christ I hear the chains falling. Where are you coming from? Where are you coming from? Abuja. Abuja here. Yes, 
Did you come alone? Yes, sir. Come. I want to pray for you. Look at me. Just calm down. Look at me. I want to pray for you. Two things. Number one, God is going to take something out of your stomach. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That demonic thing that is growing to become a fibroid, God wants to cause it now. Number two, I want to pray for you. I'm seeing you in the realm of the spirit and I'm seeing a woman, but I'm not seeing a face. This is something that has covered your glory. I want to pray for you. I use as a point of contact. If there is anyone here, the devil has covered your glory. You are among men that can give you visibility, but something is covering you. I bow my knees to the God of heaven and I tear that fell into pieces. I tear that fell into pieces. I tear... I tear that fell into pieces. Hallelujah. Let it be so for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. For all of you who have come out, I decree and declare. For whatever reason you came out, let there be miracles for you supernatural miracles in jesus name what do you do sir huh businessman sir businessman i have an oil and gas firm sir the just i just asked you what you do i want to pray for you thank you sir i'm seeing you climb a ladder that breaks and brings you down look at me i don't know you all sir but i want to pray for you here god makes men he doesn't just bring made people he makes men stand up what will happen to you between now and August will surprise you. I'm saying it in the open. I release that grace. Go back to the oil and gas sector with that grace. Go and excel. Shift systems and excel. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is God that causes men to advance. Nobody has the power in himself to advance. Please hear me. It is not within the power of men to move beyond certain points. Mama, the Lord is asking me to pray for you. Let mama come. This is a whole family. I don't know what is it, but God is visiting this family. All of you come out. I'm seen by the spirit. I don't know you. Are you alone, ma? Look at me. Yes, I'm alone. Where are your children? One is in London. The other ones are in Abujai. Please shift. Let me talk to mama. Mama. I want to pray for you shame and reproach i'm saying it in the open whatever wants to turn your children to become instruments of shame and reproach i stand by the god of heaven i cancel it right now i cancel it right now in the name of jesus number two mama you don't have any business with dead people coming to you in dreams while you are sleeping I declare in the name of Jesus every covenant that connects you to the grave. Shebakatosketa. I'm using Mama to pray for anyone here. The voice of the grave is calling you or calling your loved ones. You are seeing the faces of dead men. Mateske Barata. Shkadibarakatos. In the name of Jesus, I break that connection forever. I break that connection forever. For the living and the dead have nothing in common. I separate you by the blood of the eternal covenant. Who is Deborah? Deborah. I'm hearing a name, Deborah. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what gets there? And if our God is for us, then who Hallelujah. Just let me two minutes we are done. Two of you, the power of God is going to come on you. Eh? I'll pray for everybody, but I can imagine that there are so many Deborahs. You can just stand. I know all of you are Deborahs, but we'll just pray. Sometimes God just does these things. But there are two of you right now as I'm speaking. The angel of the Lord is pouring oil on your head. And the power of God is going to come upon you. There are activations happening to two of you. It's not something you can stand. We're talking of the power of the Holy Spirit here. Two of you.
May the sound of reproach help her not be heard in your life again. That lady under the anointing, may the sound of reproach from you and your family not be heard anymore. I pray for all of you who have come out by this prophetic word. In the name of Jesus, go back and experience victory. Go back and experience victory. God who located you is also giving you a testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where are you from? My sister. Where are you from? Kaduna Road, sir. Huh? Kaduna Road. I come from Kaduna Road. From where? Kaduna Road. No, no, no. Where are you from? State from of Kogi origin. State, Kogi. I want to pray for you. That everything that is not the planting of God, huh? In the name, I'm not a prophet of doom, don't be afraid. I decree and declare anything that wants to bring you down and bring your family to the grave, I cancel it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. For all of you who are out, may the Lord grant you victory. In Jesus' name. Please go back to your seat rejoicing very quickly. hallelujah I don't know if it's the mother or the person who is here your son has written jam jam seven times no admission they try and try and nothing happens I don't know if the individual is here or I just want to break that that demonic hold right now and then we'll sit down and listen Number two, well, this, this may not be something I'll say publicly, but we have to pray. I'm seeing a politician in serious trouble. We have to pray. We have to pray. The spirit of the waster, in the name of Jesus, provided you are under this influence, we declare that for the sake of the grace and the mercy of God, everything that wants to cause the sword, you do not live by the sword and you will not die by the sword. In the name of Jesus Christ, the course of the waster will follow them in the name of Jesus who is the Christ of God the course of the waster will follow them in the name of Jesus can we sit down to continue please sit down God bless you I rebuke that spirit that lady let me pray for her the lady on green there yeah. I command that devil let her go now release our destiny give her peace in jesus name god bless you you can take them including this one now in jesus name now please pay attention we're discussing something here spiritual patterns guarantee the glory of god every time his glory is revealed it is proof that his patterns have been kept number two compliance to spiritual patterns guarantees sustainable results sustainable results matthew chapter 7 please give us verse 24 to 27 matthew chapter 7 therefore whosoever heareth these sayings of mine the bible says and doeth them i will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock reading to 27 and the rain descended listen carefully and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house everything that happened to the other fellow building on sand happened to this same man the bible says and it fell not why for it was founded upon a rock 26 and everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand last verse and the rain descended the floods came the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell here's what the bible says and great was the fall of it you must trust god for grace to get out of these balloon results up today down tomorrow are we together now the Bible declares that the path of the just can be as a shining light when it is not built by patterns it will not last I assure you no matter how flamboyant it looks don't trust it because of the aesthetics 
trust it because of the patterns that when the rain comes when the wind blows it will stand because it was built upon the rock ministry let it be built upon patterns there are many people for instance who start ministry just because they heard the voice of God <laughs> that looks very spiritual but it's a dangerous motivation for ministry God told me go and start ministry that's wonderful so why did you start the ministry I know that God told me I am sending you to heal the sick I am sending you to be an evangelist the voice of God must submit to the patterns for church growth otherwise you will be surprised that even though it is God sending you you will suffer as if it's not his voice is not in your life are we together there are many sincere people who are under all kinds of limitations in life because they exalted prophecy they exalted the speakings of spirits they exalted the advices of men even well-intentioned people above the patterns of God hear me if you never hear any audible voice and all you do is submit to the integrity of scripture you will have the result that is greater than one who hears every day and does not walk in the patterns listen to what I'm telling you Africa is a place of a lot of spirituality delving now into superstition our strength is based on the numerous noise of voices sincere and insincere all together none of them let me tell you no matter how well-meaning sustains the ability to keep a man you must subscribe to the patterns no matter who prophesies or blesses your business it does not sustain the ability to produce results transgenerationally until in addition to that voice and that prophecy you subscribe to the pattern that makes for longevity of anything are we together patterns are powerful sustainable results fruits that abide you want to build something that lasts please look up you want to be in ministry or in business or in whatever endeavor you are involved in for a very long time leaders are intentional people they are men of mastery nobody wins the olympic by mistake When you have the patterns, you cannot only perpetuate the results, you can reproduce them anywhere regardless. It is true. It is true. Patterns give you sustainability, look up please, and predictability to your results. When you are up today and down tomorrow, favor today, disfavor tomorrow laughing today smiling tomorrow there's too much amateurism and guess what in your work you have to back up and begin to study the patterns that bring predictability to your life are we together for instance using business people as a case study there are many wealthy and blessed people today who rose to the ranks of, of financial abundance through knowledge they can reproduce and perpetuate their result regardless the geographic region, regardless the policies surrounding them because they build by light. There are others who, respectfully speaking, maybe just looted from the treasury. Even though they have it, they can't perpetuate it. They can't reproduce it because it did not come through understanding. Hallelujah. God is giving you predictability because you see, when you succeed, Usually men will believe you are lucky. <laughs> but when your results become sustained, there's no more luck there. You don't become sustainably successful by luck. Gentiles can come to your light, but their kings only come to the brightness of your rising. This is true for any aspect of life. Politics and governance, business, ministry, career, family whatever it is provided you hold the keys 
the patterns that are responsible for that outcome I had the privilege of watching God's servant I couldn't make it and I was watching the 40th anniversary of the living faith and while I heard him preach at a point quite honestly I was not just listening to the sermon again I was saying I remember or I can imagine when the ministry was say 10 or 15 years probably he said after 40 years we'll still be doing this I'm sure there are people who said you are not sure but now after 40 years when I looked at Papa Copeland in his 80s speaking with such conviction I said patterns are dangerously powerful they look like they will fail but you will keep working with them for a long time and they will not fail the simplicity of patterns is why they are not trusted patterns are deceptfully simple if it be thou bid me come come he said and such a complicated issue like walking on water suddenly becomes child's play because someone learned to obey the master spiritual patterns give you predictability and sustainability let me tell you this 30 years if Christ tarries 40 years if Christ tarries you will still be standing and waxing strong and moving forward because you are not moving yourself forward there is an agency a combination of the spirit and understanding moving you forward fear your result if it just happened but if it happened by patterns rest leads me to the third point spiritual patterns give us peace and confidence it's one thing to have results but it's another thing to trust and to be secured in the results that you have peace and confidence Isaiah 33 and verse 6 it says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times when you have wisdom when you have knowledge it gives you stability you no longer are afraid of your results why because the some of you here are chefs some of you here are wonderful people when it has to do with cooking and the rest if you ask me now as anointed as i am you bring me ingredients and say quickly you are giving 30 minutes or two hours cook something you have to sign that whatever i cook you must eat it so that i don't know i'm i'm sure that i'm not wasting my time are we together I'll have to pray except if the Holy Ghost just appears and says add this after 10 minutes add this it's not that bad but I think it's not good too I'm not <laughs> are we together yeah why it's not because the food cannot be made there is a lot of guessing you'll be surprised that salt may be the first thing I'll add <laughs> and then add any other thing mix them I'll just mix whatever the menu says and close it and say Lord I unto you I commit this meal but there are some of you here even if we say cook for all of us even if it's for 20,000 people all you need is space and time you will surprise us like you are cooking for one person because you are cooking out of knowledge you are not afraid of what you are doing the number does not matter the formula is the same are you seeing that now yes so you are no longer afraid of your results listen God is helping you to take away fear the moment you are afraid can I deliver can I not deliver that is a report card go back and become a master masters don't fear they, they are saturated by the ordinances that keep them on top they are secured by it when you say God help me he does not say ah you're about to disgrace my name we're talking of the ancient of days he now says clear let me see that challenge God I've never seen it he said it doesn't matter I'm creator I can take it out of the way mastery we must fade away fear from our lives fear of producing results God blesses your business you make great gain and you are afraid because you are sure it will not last the moment you are sure it's not it will not last you are right it won't last 
I'm called into ministry. What is the guarantee that I'll still be blessing people? What is the guarantee that if I stand on the crusade ground, the sick will be healed? What's the guarantee that if I speak, God is directing me and saying, I'm blessing people. I'm imparting someone. Ah, let me not announce it. Oh, what if I now say, your name is John and nobody comes out? What if I now say, God is giving speed and everybody is looking at you? No. It is a call for mastery. You go back and learn the ways of the spirit. How can you walk when you don't know the way of the wind? How can you run when you don't know the way of the spirit? How can you fly when you don't know the way of the wind? His power at work in you, changing everything in obedience to Christ. Tonight, swallow your pride. Tonight, come to the school of the Spirit. Don't you know, in His hands are the keys to eternal life. It's a little here. A little dear, and then your day will dawn. He's at work in you, changing everything in obedience to Christ. He's the Holy Ghost, He's the Holy Ghost, He's the Spirit of the Living God. He's the Holy Ghost, scepter of the King of Kings. He's the Holy Ghost, the seal of the age to come. He's changing everything in obedience to Christ. Rearranging everything in obedience to Christ. You are building everything. Please sit down we have to pray peace and confidence leviticus 26 and verse 6 a scripture i found that blessed me years ago please read with me if you're a christian ready one to read and i will give you peace in the land say amen, amen. let's keep reading and ye shall lie down and none shall make you afraid and i will read evil beasts out of the land neither shall the sword go through your land why job told us the secret that the lord would deliver you from six things one of it is the scourging tongues of men he said because you have a covenant with the stones do you know what that means that every manipulation of witchcraft depends on the elements of creation to work but i have a covenant with them so when you use them against me they would not work they were authorized to support me and not fight me whether you use water whether you use the stones whether you use the rocks whether you use animals there is a covenant between me and creation that no enchantment and no divination can stand so i find rest i can sleep with my eyes closed please sit down thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day the noisome pestilence the destruction help them please that wasted in noonday there are all kinds of evils sweeping across our world you get up in the morning you are stretching outside you just receive something you have no business receiving you return back into a life of tragedies someone shout no way And confidence many believers are afraid we pray out of fear we walk out of fear how am I sure that if I lose this job there is a way out how am I sure my destiny will be fine 
now that i'm 40 or 50 or 60 how am i sure they are not going to diagnose me with maybe kidney or prostrate find rest i will be still and know you are god my soul be still and know you are god truly i will be still and know you are god my soul be still and know you God is giving us peace and rest. It used to be elderly people who have high blood pressure. Right now you see teenagers moving around, talking as if they are 50 years. Someone who is 19, speaking foolishly. What is wrong? And he's not even aware. May that spirit be far from your life. Far from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Worry. There are people who sleep, they have to take pills that are as full as my hand. In their, their teens, their 20s, their 30s, their 40s, it's almost killing you. Find peace. Mastery of the patterns of God. Can, you can secure his presence. You can know he's there. Waiting for a feeling is nonsense. You can know he's there. And I will be still. And know you are God. We will be still and know you are God. But Apostle, while I'm being still, how shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. How shall these things be? How shall my life be lifted? Are you sure God will not disappoint me? Should I truly put all my eggs in one basket? If it is the divine patterns of God, you can die believing him, I assure you. But before you make boast, be sure that you are walking by his patterns. Because if you are not walking by his patterns, shame is imminent. But if by his patterns, then you can be sure that his divine power can give men all things that pertains unto life and godliness. Listen to me. God in this season is going to be challenging many of you to do a lot of things. Ambitious things. Daring things. He's going to give you instructions. You may do what you have never done in your life before. Find rest. Trust the patterns. Even if you do not trust yourself. For some of you, God will speak to you and say, Alright, by next month, start that building. And the only thing you have is 10 bags of cement. And a land you are still negotiating. And God will say, you go and get one trailer of sharp sand. Pour it there, let the devil see it. That the hand of Zerubbabel. Let me tell you this. God can only become Omega if you allow him become Alpha. If you refuse, I initiate that dimension. Lord, you must be Alpha. Then he is guaranteed to be Omega. Write this down. The Bible is a coded compendium of spiritual patterns. The Bible is a coded compendium. Bible is a coded compendium. Listen carefully. The Bible is a coded compendium of spiritual patterns that lead to various kinds and various levels of extraordinary results. I was teaching the school of ministry students i think it was yesterday and we were examining pneumatology and i was telling them that the bible just because every kingdom has secrets are we in agreement every kingdom has secrets and the secrets are hidden listen carefully they can hide the treasures of the kingdom somewhere there can be coded doors some of the doors are even hidden in dimensions. It's not a physical door. You invoke, you enchant things and then the doors appear. They are hidden in dimensions. Planes of reality. The Bible, this book you see, is more than a book with information. It is a compendium of coded secrets from the Old Testament 
to the New Testament, the Gospels, the Epistles, down till Revelation. It is coded and full of mysteries that control different levels of results. Just reading them intellectually may not grant you access to all of those coded information. The Bible says, let me show you a scripture that will bless you very quickly and then we'll pray. Isaiah 29, please, from verse 11 and 12. Isaiah 29, verse 11 and 12, very quickly. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of what? A book. Koinonia, read with me. A book that is sealed. Just because it is opened does not mean it is opened. You can open your Bible, but it is still sealed. Which men deliver to one who is educated, saying, Read this, I pray. And he said, I cannot. Why? For it is sealed. Next verse. It says, And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I'm not even educated in the first place. What kind of a book is that? That whether you are educated or not, it doesn't mean anything as far as decoding the mysteries are there. Your life, not prophetically, directly, is written in this book you are seeing. Believe me, this is not just a prophetic statement. It's a literal statement. But until God opens your eyes, you will find something that was written in the Bible that has not been fulfilled by anybody. And you will know you are the one it was written for. Not just to apply it prophetically, directly. But until God opens your eyes, you will not see the messianic prophecy was written hundreds of years before jesus came many people saw it and they thought they were the ones to fulfill it but when jesus came in luke chapter 4 the bible says he was given the scroll of Isaiah for to read when he opened it he said the spirit of the lord is upon me when he was done saying it he said today this scripture is fulfilled that means i am the one this was written about you will be surprised to know how many things were written about you and your family until god connects the dots psalm 25 and verse 14 here it is the secret of the lord the secret of the lord god has secrets believers hear me god has secrets not everything is in plain sight the secret of the lord is with them that fear him the hebrew word yirat adonai the spirit of reverence is with them that fear him and he will show them listen there is a dimension of spiritual truth that cannot be studied you are initiated like occultism into that body of truth you cannot find it on your own it's the spirit of grace that will draw your hands and take you to that inner chamber of the spirit and you will see mysteries it says open down my eyes that i may behold behold wondrous things from out of thy law until then i'll just be reading the law but when my eyes are open then i will now see hallelujah matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 jesus was teaching and he said because it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom please look up these patterns as coded as they are they were encapsulated into a body of knowledge the bible calls mysteries please shout it after me say mysteries the mysteries of the kingdom what are they the hidden code of operation these are the body of truth that help believers to excel in light the body of truth are located for my victory and your victory. They are called mysteries. Happy is a man that finds them. Happy is the man who God causes to approach him. When you approach him, he grants you access to these mysteries. When you find it, they are life to those who find them. Your life becomes episodes of wonder. Just when you think you have exhausted a dimension, you will see another one unfolding.
Ephesians chapter 3. Let's do a long reading and then we'll pray. There was a man in scripture called Paul. He later would become the apostle of the Lamb. This was a man who was learned. He was a Pharisee. And then when he began to communicate certain depths of the spirit, Paul noticed that every time as he sojourned, mentoring and building the church, even the very apostles of the Lamb were concerned. Are you sure about these things you are teaching? And Paul said, listen, before I start my lecture, I need for you to know the basis. Give it to us. Verse 1. For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, reading to verse 10, if ye have learned of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was, which is given me to you, word, that means for your sake, a measure of grace was given. How that by revelation, you see it there, he made known unto me the mystery. A body of truth was given to me as an apostle for the sake of a generation. He's explaining now that as complicated as my thoughts are, you need to understand that these are not fabrications of a Pharisee's intelligence. I was drawn like being initiated into a room and I was given a body of truth for a generation. As I wrote afore in few words, verse 4, it says, Whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. 5. Which in other ages, here it is, was not made known unto the sons of men. Wow. These dimensions were not revealed to anyone. It says, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit verse 6 that the gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of the promise in christ by the gospel 7 whereof i was made a minister according to the gift are you seeing it there the gift of the grace of god given unto me by the effectual working of his power 8 unto me who i am lest than the least of the saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Two more verses. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God who created all things by Christ. What do we do with these mysteries? Verse 10. To the intent. This is why these mysteries are given. There are arrogant principalities and powers that will not respect God nor the saints. So this mystery was given as a way of punishing the powers of darkness and forcing them to acknowledge the superiority of Christ to the intent that now to the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom. When those, minis, those mysteries manifest, we call them the wisdom of God. But listen to me. They are a body of truth. I'm praying that you will believe what I'm telling you. And you will be surprised to see the way your life will change. Mysteries. When you hold them like a bunch of keys, you can find rest knowing that your life must become exceptional all you need to do is begin to travel when you stand before a door you check and remember the holy ghost is with you there what mystery opens that door and he says open this twice the mystery that opens this door is there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty you get to a door and the mystery that opens it is that you sow both bread and seed. Seed is for eating, bread is for sowing. But there are certain doors that both bread and seed together is what opens them. That you can cast your bread before the waters. And in this case, you will find it after many days. Then you open that door. You can get to another door. It says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy of praise. By doing that, I will be saved from my enemy. So when it is clear that defeat is imminent, 
you will back up like the days of Jehoshaphat. Write your prayer request on the ground and dance like a madman while people are sleeping over something you know has been concluded. And while that is happening, ah, the God of heaven. All our is turning things around. Yeah. All our is turning things around. All our is turning things around. Oh At midnight, while the rest were sleeping, Paul and Silas said, you wasted your time by closing this door. You would have chained me in the days of my ignorance. But we are not just here as empty apostles. We know what to do. When they prayed, they saw angels. They said, get out of my way. I need God himself to come here. The Bible says they sang. They sang aloud. Because they are singing aloud was putting pressure on his integrity suddenly the one who sits on the throne they sang it so beautifully and even unto the lamb he arose and said nonsense let me see the gate that is covering you and he scattered it into pieces let me show you peace and rest that comes through master mastery the jailer took knife to kill himself he said don't rush this is a result we can reproduce again there's no point killing yourself when jesus resurrected he did not rush out of the grave no no there's no need rushing i rose up by myself what am i running for and he came out with honor and dignity i can do it again if need be i am the resurrection and the life Are you ready to pray I thought we'll have time so that I will share with you in my entire life I hope that we'll take it in some other series we didn't finish covering what I intended we'll cover tonight but there are nine of these mysteries that the Lord gave to me nine for an unbeatable spiritual life some of them whilst i learned them as i listened to our fathers of faith i heard them saying the same thing expressing it in different ways nine when you find these keys you will stand and play life like you are playing a chess go this way go that way believe me i apologize if it sounds like pride behind results at work are these mysteries they are the defense systems of masters you stand and they become a garrison to you irrefutable backed up by the jealousy of god himself you can take it to any nation and take it anywhere people will think you are making noise till the result humbles them hear me we make our boast in the lord and on the strength of the mysteries we have held and these mysteries they are not for individuals they are for the body to be dispensed so that on the strength of these mysteries you can turn back and go rejoicing knowing that life can be at your command we command results intentionally I hope please do not miss any one of these i hope that god will grant grace and will touch all nine of them the mysteries that control fearful results in this life every student prepares for exams but it's the result that the marker when the lecturer marks they place it on the board you will come and see what you wrote there is that true how many of you remember people who will make a lot of noise after exam the answer is five the answer is ten whereas someone will just keep quiet as if he doesn't know anything that's the person you will see getting 95 97 and someone is making noise nonsense from morning till night and you find out that you will get seven or twelve God is bringing us to that place of mastery noiseless victory it is the results that will make the noise. Are you ready to pray? 
prayer point number one lord i am tired of shadow boxing around my destiny i want you to bring me to a place of quintessence a place of mastery spiritually financially and otherwise please lift your voice and pray we came to pray a few minutes of prayer Are you praying? He that strives for mastery is not proud except he strives lawfully. The mysteries of the kingdom, controlling results, spiritual patterns, leading men to predictable outcomes. Hallelujah. Look up. Please, we are going to pray. As we prepare to begin to feast on these mysteries in the coming weeks, you are going to pray and say, Lord, open my eyes understanding is a real miracle i'm telling you then open he their understanding that they might understand scripture are you ready to pray lord open my eyes to see may i see what my father did not see may i see what those who have gone ahead of me did not see in the name of jesus please pray please pray in the name of jesus the christ of god Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Scripture says, He that told you have asked for nothing, the seed for receiving is asking. He said, Ask, and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Listen. You're going to pray one serious prayer father the door that stands before me now what is the mystery that opens it reveal it to me please lift your voice and pray. every door standing before us there is a mystery and there is a pattern in ministry the door of the next level for your spiritual life show me show me by your mercy the door to signs and wonders the door to increase and multiplication the door to influence and visibility the door to grace and power from on high Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In the ministry of William Branham, of blessed memory, the Lord gave him a code and said, There is an angel that I will send to walk with you. And that every time his prophetic gift was to be opened and unlocked, he would have to wait until that angel came and it was recorded that many times they would wait for as, as long as an hour they would sing psalms hymns spiritual songs they would be angry he would stand there and say i can do nothing i was instructed that it is the coming of this angel that opens up my prophetic fountain and later in the middle of nowhere he will just say wow the angel has come and within minutes the time lag will be well paid for, justifiably paid for by the level of divine unction. For Samson, it was his hair, not even his hands. 
protect your hair as a Nazarene. It's not just something that rolls around your hair. There is a mystery attached to it. For the young lad and that crusade ground, the mystery was hidden in five loaves and two fish. Whoever was careless with that five loaf and two fish will not only be stopping a young man from eating, he will be stopping 5,000 people from having healthy meals. For many of you, God will give you certain secrets that for the next six months, your secret is your prayer life. Not just random as believers. Pray from 12 to 1. There is something I want to do. It's a personalized dealing. You miss out on that unique instruction, you'll be surprised how powerless you will be. Are we together? For Archbishop Benson, either whole site was said that a time came, God gave him an instruction that 80% of his earnings would have to go was a sacrifice. But living off 20% made him so wealthy, he was so blessed, he was so visible, he went around the world 53 times. It is the divine strategy that is given to us that provides for victory. When you stand before Jericho, don't guess how to bring it down. Jericho is a fearful city. Five chariots can stand on the fence. You need a strategy. Because even if Jericho falls down, you still cannot pass. It will still become another fence. You need a formula. Sometimes it may not make sense. You will go around six times. Foolishly so. And then you go around seven times on the seventh day and you will be asked to shout for some of you. And it is in that shout that Jericho falls down. There are some of you, God will tell you to go for a three days dry fasting. Dry means dry. And it's in that fasting he will reveal to you the ordinances of the next level of your life. For some of you, God will give you very dangerous instructions. Some of you, God will say for the next one week, Gather all your family members who are praying every day. Whoever is sleeping should sleep in the parlor. They carry the person and bring the person out. And you are praying. That is the instruction. For some of you, your strategy is hold your peace and allow me fight. Step out of the way. Your worry is interrupting my battle. Just step back and allow me be the one who stands for you. Lord, what is the strategy on our way from Egypt leaving this place? I will come to you as a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. If you don't see fire by night, don't move. If you don't see cloud by day, don't move. I am not there. Don't guess. Saul. You are a king, but you are not a prophet. Don't offer sacrifices. And the people pressured Saul. They said, look, Samuel is wasting our time. We can't be here. Are you not a king? And out of pressure, he offered the sacrifices. To God or not to an idol. As soon as he was done, Samuel came and said, Saul, you have done foolishly. What did you do? You would have allowed me come and God would have established your throne forever. But now for violating patterns, the throne is taken away from you. God can ask you to carry a seed and give a man of God. Because you don't want it to leave your house, you carried it and gave your child. You did not obey. That's, that's disobedience. Listen, I'm saying this because as you leave this place, God will not leave you without a witness. You will hear him and he will speak to you. He will give you instructions. He will tell you things. Some of them may be ego stinging, but they contain in them the mysteries of the kingdom. If you have the childlike approach to listen, you will be surprised what will happen to you. Are we blessed? For some of you, God is going to give you instructions. Dust your CV and keep it. Have soft copies and keep it. But I'm not applying for anything. Just do what I'm asking you to do. A gentleman got a job 
by sending a text by mistake to a general he felt like dying because he knew that he had abused the privilege and the general called back he was afraid he said who is this i'm so, so, so I'm, I'm sorry sir i was to send it to somebody he said no no problem come and meet me in my office that became his job that was not a mistake it was the holy ghost directing him to his place of destiny don't choose who will help you allow god choose them you choose who will help you you, you will be punished by the vacillations of men's emotion i will help you today tomorrow they'll say i can't remember telling you that look unto god they looked unto him and their faces were lightened the bible says we have to close let me pray for you father in the name of jesus christ we say amen to everything you are doing amen 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 to our lifting and to our rising amen amen as a family of faith we are receiving that prophetic word let it be so for us oh god visibility to influence to favor to speed to high level spirituality to fresh unction you are receiving you are not just singing one more time testimonies come this week to multiply opportunities to open doors to the salvation of our loved ones we say amen to exemption from kidnappers to exemption from the the scorching tongues of men for the last time as a family of faith you to pray a prayer before we go into the details of the requirement and say lord any price for my destiny i receive grace to pray it lift your voice if you are not ready you don't have to pray you won't go to hell but be sure that you are not going to rise any price for my destiny lord i'm tired of living my life carelessly i'm growing older time is going there's nothing that is giving my life meaning as i listen to your word now lord if it will sting me let it sting me but my heart my mind my spirit is open let no price be too great oh god for my destiny let no price be too great for my destiny are you praying Lord, there is an anointing upon my life the nations must drink from. There is no price that is too great. Make sure you are praying. Don't be careless tonight. You are about to hear something that will change your life. Some of you change your lineage because of you, through you. You've been complaining about what has happened. Now God is giving you a choice to make a decision that probably your parents did not make. Lord, let pain let pain not stand my way to greatness give me grace to conquer pain give me grace to conquer shame hallelujah let's write number one requirement to fulfilling your God-given destiny the first requirement is an encounter with Jesus a genuine encounter with Jesus not coming out for an altar call that's important but an encounter with Jesus 
John 7 when you read John 7 John 3 I'm sorry verse 7 actually it's 3 to 7 John chapter 3 the encounter that Nicodemus had with Jesus now understand this the context of that scripture is very interesting because Nicodemus was a teacher of the law Nicodemus was a doctor he was a philosopher he was intelligent he was a graduate he was even employed Nicodemus was not a small man he was a man of influence but every time together with his colleagues they kept insulting Jesus castigating Jesus but there were secret fears and frustration Nicodemus got to a point where his life was not making sense and then he sneaked in by night and came to Jesus and then he says Rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from God for no man can do these things except God be with him and then Jesus said verily verily I say unto you right he said except ye be born again you shall not see the kingdom of God now he, he begins to talk how can I be born again will I enter into my mother's womb and then verse 5 he now says um, you know verily verily I say unto you except ye be born of the water and of the spirit then you cannot enter the kingdom right then Jesus now begins to speak and all of that and says the wind blow it where it listed verse 7 that's where I'm really going to verse 7 this is what he said marvel not that I say unto you ye must be born again he didn't say ye may he didn't say ye should being born again is not an advice being born again is a requirement writing jam is not an advice writing jam is a requirement having five credits no story is not an advice are we together is the necessary and sufficient condition to gain admission let me tell you life has requirements there is a cut off point the starting point is born again it's amazing how many people want to walk with God but they don't want to be born again they want to be around church they want to be around the things of God they want to have Christian names being born again is more than just confessing Jesus being born again is prioritizing God that God becomes your obsession your priority and your motivation there's no hope of leaving him as born again because he, he he explained it he said you must be born of two things the water and the spirit the water there represents the ministry of the word the cleansing power of the word an encounter with the holy ghost being born again is not just cheap talk where you just come and stand i believe in you you are pinching yourself and laughing it may be a starting point but i'm telling you being born again is much more than jesus becoming one of those important deities there is a herbalist at home there is jesus there is the charm it's just that he's the most important of all of them you are not born again please i'm saying this whether you are listening here and you are or you are following online if you have any other charm any other talisman any other material point of reference point of of activating the realm of the spirit outside of christ and everything that is consistent with his character you are not born again very simple are we together dear you can't tell me you are born again and then under certain conditions you can receive something you know and many of us listen many of us young people you may be laughing at me but there's something they gave you from home they say look life this life is more than what you are seeing that is true you need help that is true but the, where the problem starts is what you are giving they pray for you and give you a bible and then they squeeze one charm that looks like an arrow they tell you to put it under your box you are not born again no sir see let me tell you anything that the lord jesus cannot bring in your life don't let anybody fool you that it will happen it may look like it's happening but you see because jesus said i am the door do you know what that means i am the legal access point to everything in the kingdom he never said i am the only one he said i am the door any other person can enter the house through windows but there is always a side effect you will not see it yet until the charm starts working so the charm will give you money and take your fertility are you getting the point now that's not the discussion with the herbalist he himself does not know the side effect because he is practicing 
so you collect the charm you start building the house but then you find out that you cannot give birth again or you give birth to 12 children and none of them become useful any other door listen there are many like this place now if we see you smuggling yourself through this window we know you are an armed robber you are a thief are we together there is a legitimate entrance don't tell me you are entering which way are you following jesus said i am the door i am the door don't tell me you are getting rich don't tell me you are getting blessed don't tell me you are increasing it matters to me whether you are following the door then i will know whether your success will have side effect on me let me tell you don't come close to anybody until you study the systems around his life and how he is doing what he is doing how she is doing what she is doing are we together now an encounter with jesus when you encounter jesus you will not only love him you will follow him you will not only love him you will serve him you will not only love him you will live for him you will not only love him you will influence others into that encounter with him has nothing to do with ministry has nothing to do with being a man of god it is the effect of an encounter when saul of tarsus in the book of acts had an encounter with the lord jesus christ it changed his life forever remember what's the name of that short man in the bible zacchaeus when zacchaeus had an encounter with jesus what happened it changed his life forever zacchaeus just come down i'm going to your house at once zacchaeus changed when he met the centurion it changed there were other people i believe that jesus met that were not recorded in the bible because you see the way they had a soft spot towards him one of them was joseph of arimathea i believe he was a great man and because he was caesar's friend you can liken it to being in the same political party so he would not be outspoken about jesus but secretly secretly he loved him have you had an encounter with jesus enough to fuel your life for a lifetime if the lifespan do you know it's a terrible thing when people love god on campus or love god before marriage i have seen many people who used to love god on campus you see them today they are hardly born again some were campus fellowship presidents some held crusades have you seen some of our parents you see them drinking beer and you say daddy do something about it say look i held crusade in benin i held crusade in abuja i did three days dry you see them giving you what is supposed to be a good accolade and they say i've tried everything so don't even bring this issue of man of god you are just starting before you were born we serve god have you heard of ebenezer obey i was in his band have you heard of uh, so 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 and so I, I sang there they carry the pain of their frustration and make it look as though it's serving god that brought that to them it's a terrible thing for someone to say i once was with god and now i've left him no sir he said, ye who have continued with me. Not those who started. Ye who have continued with me. Lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, I'm with you forever. I'm with you forever. I'm with you forever. Mm. Lift your voice and pray. I need you to secure your place. Because some of us are already one leg in, one leg out. The pain of recession is about sweeping you. Ah! Jesus, Jesus, how I trust you, how I prove the your Lord. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh for grace to, to trust you. Lift your voice and say, Lord, what shall separate me from your love? Not famine. Uh -uh. not CGPA not recession I am with you and I am with you forever whether things work well or not whether ministry works well or not is a decision I have made lift your voice and pray any other person can make his decision any other person can say anything 
Lord, I know that I may be angry if I don't succeed, but leaving you is not part of the equation. It's a salt covenant. It's a fraternity with you in life and in death. I pledge allegiance to the land with all my strength, with all I am, I will sing to honor His command. I pledge allegiance. Sing it like a kingdom anthem from your heart. an encounter you will raise your children after your encounter don't tell me you are a christian father are you hearing what i'm saying and you give birth to a child and then you don't care what the child is watching you don't care whether the child is going to church are we together many little children that's why i love our little ones in koinonia you may think they are not understanding what we are teaching but it's entering their spirit we live in a society where parents, they, they just, their assignment is just to give birth to children. They give them education. They give them every other thing but Jesus. Are we together? Yeah. You're going to church, you leave the baby with a house help. Are we together? You come back from church and you sit down. Other adults are watching certain things that may not be good for the child. You don't care. Let me tell you, if you have an, an encounter with Jesus, everything you do, whoever is under your roof will do it. Oh, come on. You stay under my roof as I'm blasting tongues. I want to hear your own in your room. Shakatakataba. Likotobakaya. In your room, you are responding. You, you don't stay under my roof. I'm paying for your life and you are living your life then it means you are an adult enough if you stay under my roof you will serve Jesus I assure you please take what I am saying seriously our society is depraved today because many parents went to church but they did not have encounter so they only gave us what was valuable to them which was education as good as it is they didn't give us Jesus some of us were on our way to destruction but God intercepted. Ah, hallelujah. You've heard me say it again and again. When a lady brings a gentleman, a lady brings a gentleman to her parents, they don't ask whether he's born again and serious with God. Let me tell you, in one minute, I can know whether you are born again or not, even if you wear suit. Ha <laughs> ha. This is a culture. This is a culture. Are we together? So we give our daughters to foolish men who are anti-kingdom. We give our sons to wicked women who are anti-Christ. And we, this, this combination produces nonsense. That's what is destroying our, our generation now. What we are reaping is the carelessness of 30 years. The carelessness of 40 years. And if we do not correct it, let me tell you, the key is not insulting the government. There must be a generation that is addicted and no nonsense about God. Imagine a man getting married with his wife. Two of them pray in tongues, no problem. Two of them love God, no problem. As you give birth to your child, before wicked men hold him, you hold him as the father. Shakata bakataya. You are prophesying. 
What are you doing? I'm prophesying. Oh, stop that thing. Are you joking? That's how I married in the first place. I call you blessed. You came out from my loins. I prophesy. You will. Everything is born after its kind. I will not love God and give birth to an armed robber. So you prophesy. If I'm your father, you should look like it. I'm showing you what lack of an encounter has produced in our society. To an extent, to an extent that if you are godly, they look at you as if something is wrong with your life. You have to explain godliness, something that should be institutionalized. Go outside of Zaria and see a young lady. If a young lady likes a guy, do you know how she attracts him? She starts singing bad and nonsense songs, thinking that's what he likes. Are you getting the point now? So you sing all of the songs thinking that by singing that the guy will be attracted. Brother, shout no way. Abba. Abba. After reading Proverbs 31. Uh -uh. Ladies, you too shout no way. Don't bring shell and NMPC and deceive anybody. Do you have an encounter with Jesus? Listen. Don't just say I have an encounter with God. God means anything. Do you have an encounter with Jesus, the son of the living God? Let me prove to you that a man has an encounter with Jesus. You are unashamed about submitting to his values. If you have met Jesus, then you must be ready to submit to his values. Don't come and meet me with your philosophy, your ideology. You have not met Jesus. Listen. If you are here in Koinonia, if you are truly under this grace, you should have submitted to our way of doing things. So when you see somebody who is under this grace, you know at once the way you talk, the things you do, your passion for God. You can easily know someone who just came to Koinonia for the first time. Sometimes people come to share testimonies here and once in a while they can be a bit unruly or a bit vulgar and I see the reaction in people. It's like, no, 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 this is anti koinonia culture. I can see it in you. So why will you go out with somebody who just told you he's born again? Born again is like an ID card. You can see it is visible. Okay. This, 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 thing, this thing is, I'm speaking from my spirit. Some relationships should be cancelled. Yeah, we cancel it in Jesus' name. I'm not asking you. You will see what will happen from the prophecy. Because some of you are insisting. I counsel it in the name of Jesus Christ. Destroy your life in the name of love. Love is not stupidity. Are we together? If you have had an encounter with Jesus, you must have the value system of the kingdom. Somebody comes to your house, everything he's saying is nonsense. Every wrong word do you know there are words you don't even have to be born again societally speaking when you are getting to certain political positions they culture you when you when you are going to see the queen of england or they culture you you learn how to speak there are indices that show you have encountered god number one is your words not just dressing your words you speak nonsense you say anything anytime you have a come please please all kinds of selection in your phone there is the one for when you are high you, you just take it high then whenever you feel guilty when you listen to messages on rapture the coming of christ you just switch truly you have not encountered jesus don't laugh as i'm telling you this because it's a serious thing you are not going to bribe god into fulfilling destiny it has to be his way everybody say an encounter with jesus now lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, anything trying to prove in my life that I've not had an encounter, drive it. Drive it far. Drive it far. Drive it far. Some of you need to make some calls to certain people. Call that gentleman and tell him, I love you, but apostle just preached a message. I can't marry you. It can't work again. Sorry about the time I've wasted. It can't work again. It's as simple as that. Some of us who are about to get married, some of us who have children, it's time to get back, bring the cross to your house, bring Christian values to your house. Don't live a life that is vulgar. Don't raise children that are wayward, indiscipline, no sir, no sir.
Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. You see, these are the things that should be discussed in church. I'm telling you this. Are we together? Yeah. How many elders are not born again? We just array the names of people. When did this one join our church? 1991. When did this one join our church? 98. If we give this person and don't give it, he'll be angry. Well, let's give him something. Are you seeing that? And then you now pick somebody just because he's old. He's the elder in charge of marriage counseling. You have never supervised what he's teaching the young people. And they come around and he's teaching nonsense. Do you think all this idea of beating wife, do you think people just invented it? Someone advise somebody and say, I did it, it worked. Do it, it works. Let's return Jesus to our lives. Oh. Let's return Jesus to our lives. You know what I'm saying is not a lie. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So please, if you are here today, at the end of the service, I'll make an altar call. Please, I want you to examine your concept of born again. If you have not submitted to the values of the kingdom, you need Jesus. Please, let's not argue this thing this night. You need Jesus. I don't care whether you are praying in tongues. No, sir. Are we together? Then your life, then your home. If my shirt has palm oil, you spill palm oil and you come with a white shirt and hug me and I hold you there if you leave won't you see some stain something about, show me what implicates you and shows us you have met Jesus don't just say you met Jesus the Bible says in the book of Acts in the Jerusalem council when they saw Peter they saw these guys they knew they were timid but they knew they had been with Jesus they saw them when they were timid but now they had seen them men of conviction let's sit down and continue an encounter with Jesus number one number two now that we have cleared the way I want us to sit down and talk now because this second point that I want to bring is really where the anointing is this night so what you have even received now is an appetizer here comes the main course may you eat it every part of it in Jesus name the second key the second key to fulfilling your destiny the second key to fulfilling your God-given destiny is the power of preparation and thoroughness write it down the power of preparation and thoroughness preparation thoroughness preparation thoroughness the power of preparation the power of thoroughness 2nd Chronicles 27 please verse 6 2nd Chronicles 27 verse 6 2nd Chronicles 27 I like us to read it it's projected one to read so Dotham became uh -huh, because he prepared his ways before the Lord. What was the secret of his exploits? What was the secret of his might? He prepared his way and he did that in the presence of God under his supervision, preparation. There is power in preparation. Write it down. There is power in preparation. We live in a time and a generation, especially for we young people, there is such an obsession for manifestation. Such an obsession for manifestation. Oh, let me prove I'm a millionaire by age 20. Let me prove I'm this and that. Let me prove there's nothing wrong with those things. But preparation, preparation.
preparation there is such an appetite of bringing our future into our today to prove a point and we destroy ourselves because we lack that ingredient of preparation what do you do during preparation number one what do you do during preparation number one you learn and understand the principles of the kingdom i call them the mysteries of the kingdom that's what you do during times of preparation your times of preparation are largely times of learning and understanding the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom God has called me into an extraordinary ministry. God has told me I have an apostolic or a prophetic ministry. God has told me I'm going to the nations. Every time in my dream, I see myself changing people. Thank you, man of God. But what are you doing about it? Oh, I'm already buying suits. God has even shown me who my wife will be. That's not preparation. You are, that's carelessness. I assure you, you will not arrive that way. Preparation. This great ministry that God is giving me, what will it take? What do I know? Do I understand administration? Do I understand finances? This great ministry will be fueled by the word and by the anointing. Have I understood the mysteries? Listen, I want you to put your life on a project. Find out all the tools you will be using in the place of destiny and begin to source for them. Find out. There are many tools we need. You need the anointing in the place of destiny. Have you discovered how to bring it and keep it in your life? And multiply it in your life? Number two, you need access to revelation. The working knowledge of the word of God. What keys do you have in your hand? Show me the keys you are accessing and I'll see whether you will get to your tomorrow. Finances. Our destinies are capital intensive. So they require a lot of finances. Show me what mentorship. Show me what book you are reading. Oh, apostle, I'm doing business. You will fail. That's not the key. The key is to receive knowledge. The key is to change your mindset. Not to offer products and services yet. That's the last step of the equation. We love manifestation. We love manifestation. I receive text messages all the time. And most of what people we, we, we like programs we like events conferences conventions someone sent me a text that he had a vision that we're holding six conventions in koinonia every year i said shift that vision to the future it's certainly not happening now no. convention for what what is the meaning of the word convention what is the meaning of the word conference we abuse these things because we do rituals without revelation are we together now now is the time for building please hear me now is not the time for buying suits now is the time for buying books now is the time for buying the experiences of people now is the time for buying the pain of people buy their experiences preparation I see many people who say they want to be men of God. I don't criticize them, but I'm just laughing. Because most people think all there is to ministry is to have the ability to throw somebody down. You are joking. If it was that easy, I guarantee you people would not be suffering. Benihin came around Nigeria. And you see the number of desperate people. We all flocked in waiting to receive an anointing. What does that tell you? It's scarce. Genuine power is scarce make no mistakes about it do you know why many people do not rise we are comfortable with average average will only bring you in the scene but never distinguish you reward is for those who are distinguished not those who are present <laughs> is God speaking to someone there is power in preparation let me tell you when I started out in ministry I didn't do many of the things many people are doing in life. No. No. That time, ask Jimmy, I used to walk with a bag. Remember my black bag? It had Bible. It had my books. The books, the speakings of God to my life. I would always walk with it. Those were the times you see people who buy tape. Oh, yeah, they go tape. 
maybe Pastor Chris, any other tape, and they are small rechargeable. They would raise all their money and buy rechargeable. Not, not. Many of us seated here, you do not have any device for hearing the word of God. You don't. But you have clothes. You are a young lady of 19, 20. You have clothes of a married woman of 35. It's not wise. It's, it's a terrible, it's an extended version of foolishness. Are we together? You, you must take your destiny serious. This thing does not happen by magic. God is not a charm. He's not a genie. You've got to be serious. Some of us, as you keep your Bible like this, it's Friday that you pick it again. And yet you move around. I am, I, I, I hope to be called. Let's see which one, uh, prophet, uh, apostle, I will use pastor. You are dreaming. <laughs> are we together? One gentleman sent me a text during miracle service that he was coming. I said, who are you? He says, a man of God somewhere. I said, that's all right, you are welcome. Then he sent me a text. He says, informing me so that they'll put a special reservation for him in front. I said, my brother, this front seat you see is a testimony. The front seat is not a wish. It's a testimony. This is a testimony. You, you come and sit down. The seat will reject you. Have you seen that kind of thing? Where people, kings, come and sit down. They say somebody dies. You don't sit down in a seat unprepared, sir. I look at your prayer life and I know whether you are preparing. You want to be able to stand and preach. That's what kills a lot of men of God. They have not built that spiritual capacity. Don't you know that praying in tongues is like doing business? You are making an investment of strength into your future. A time will come you will not have the time to do 10 hours every day again. I can't pray for 10 hours every day. I'll be an irresponsible man of God because there are things to do. But there were times I would stay morning till night. I was building strength. He said, eat for the journey is far. Brothers and sisters, some of you, now is the time to lock yourself. You may look stupid, but you are building an extraordinary ministry. You are already in prayer band two weeks. You say they don't know me. Please sit down, Jare, and, and work on your destiny. All this quest for recognition. Recognition. I think they should know me. No, sit down. Sit down. There is power in preparation. Let your competence announce you. Let the grace upon your life announce you. You cannot light a lamp and put it under a bushel. But you also cannot put a lamp that is not lit on top. All this quest for manifestation, please hear the voice of the Lord tonight. That's not the way to do it. That's not the way to do it. Someone asked me a question, I think, I don't know if it was a year or two ago, and said, Apostle, what are you doing with your life now? I told him, I said, I am preparing for an extraordinary life. He said, preparing? I said, exactly. Uh, you think this thing I'm doing is ministry? This is industrial attachment. My goodness. My goodness. My goodness. This is not close to what I've seen in the visions of the Lord. It doesn't even look like it. Compared to the koinonia God showed me, this is a, a cave. We are just waking up. Are you that inspired? Or have you started clapping for yourself and you want to build a camp around it? Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life. We don't need. I look to you for life. Let me come to your house and your room. Show me your library, and I see how serious you are with knowledge. Books are very important, they are a communication of your value for knowledge. When you buy a book, you are not buying paper, you are buying a man's pain. You are you are you are you are buying access to a man's testimony people's mistakes at a platter of gold for you to study and understand there are many people who don't read let me tell you how you know you are not preparing for your destiny 
is excessive idleness when i see a young man who is idle you must be lazy or you are not preparing do you know the urgency number one for most of us over 95 percent of us a mistake has already been made in our foundation i hope you know some of us got born again at 26 27 you are already behind at age 14 mary was giving birth to jesus you are 25 you are not born again you are already behind schedule. Why should you be roaming up and down? In broad daylight, you move around and you see people just taking sugar cane, gisting, and then they come to someone else's house. How are you? I was just strolling. Are you free? And then they are offended when you say you are not free. Everybody say, I'm going somewhere. Say it, I'm going somewhere. And now is the season of preparation. I will prepare. You want to be a millionaire? Let me see the preparation. Let me see the preparation. Show me the character traits you are building that will qualify God to grant you access to such wealth. You want to be an extraordinary leader? Show me those you are receiving mentorship from. You are moving around, not doing anything. Ladies, hear me. Don't be under pressure. The next thing in your life after school is not just marriage. Thank God for marriage. But build yourself. Focus on preparation than manifestation. You are not qualified to receive anything you are not prepared for. Preparation. Preparation. Settle down, prepare. Kata, kata, baladaba. Lord, you said you are going to give me the nations. Work on my character. Let me become an exceptional man of God. Lord, at this small level of ministry, they are already criticizing me. I can imagine the criticisms on great men like Papa Oyedeko and Adeboye. Lord, build me. You have already told me that my ministry will have branches all over the nations of the earth. Can I survive the criticism that takes, that, that having that kind of anointing will bring? Don't you know it's, it's, it's risky to be rich? Do you know the criticisms? Somebody will look at you and say, young people like this, they, they, they touch something. You are right. You are right. Nobody becomes rich just by doing nothing. They've criticized you small. Somebody just looked and said, I don't like Pastor Femi's shirt. And he's, he's angry. He's quarreling. He said, no, no, what is wrong with my shirt? Ah, and then you now want to be a leader over two million people. You want to die? Ask Moses. Moses, the meekest man on earth. He was angry and about to kill himself. God said, calm down. That's how ministry is. Have you ever gone to God for prayer? And God said, no, that's how it is. So I hope you know that, that there is no breakthrough for this prayer. It's how it works. A very interesting friend who wanted to organize crusade one time the guy was passionate about souls he was not passionate about finances so he wanted to organize crusade I, after the prayer fasting visions everything he didn't even start because there was nothing to start with he couldn't even start i told him i said well these are the logistics that are part of ministry And he was so disappointed and angry because in his mind, I was the sponsor of that crusade. I said, no way. God did not give me any vision. I am not the ram and the scapegoat you had from God. Flog out your way of funding that vision. Brothers and sisters, preparation is powerful. When you go through, you read books and you see how a man of God will tell you 12 years in his life, nothing worked. And then you say that I'm four years. That means there's hope for me. That means it's not unusual. It's not like I don't have faith. Let's continue going. You study about a man who built his conglomerates. He will tell you he built 20 companies and they failed. He was the 21st one that is the one that is blessing you. And you say, I just built three and they failed. Ah, there's hope for me. You are learning. Preparation is giving you strength. A time will come, they look at you and they say, You claim to be a man of God's wife. Look at your husband, his mouth is looking dry. You are not feeding him. And you say, Abba, husband, am I not feeding you? You didn't prepare. Because if you prepared, 
you would have studied other men of God's wife and they would have told you this thing is normal so as they are insulting you you just say oh so that's how it is your spirit has been prepared anything you cannot take now is because you are not preparing you will see a man of God lying down and think the place is cold. You lie down there and the heat will burn you because your skin. You know what they used to do for masquerade? They say they used to cook them so that nothing will happen. Allow preparation cooking. So that while somebody is shouting now and saying, do you know Apostle is a herbalist? Do you, I know the woman that gave him power. And then you come and tell me as a, as a concern. I say, Apostle, I respect you. They are spoiling your name and then I laugh. <laughs> I would have cried in 2006 or 7 but now oh come on prophesy to yourself say myself grow up say it myself grow up there are many needless struggles we are going through because we are not prepared you are not the first to be criticized are we together you are not the first to go through challenges you are not the first to go through disappointment it's only because you have not studied others who had worse cases so you don't have a basis for comfort God is speaking to someone tonight preparation some of us are confused where we are now you don't know whether to start a church you don't know whether to start a prayer group you are not the first to start ministry go and examine the top 20 ministries how did they start there was a day it was in their mind did they start a church service bishop oyeriko did not want to start a church because at that time there were already too many churches based on him so your confusion about should i start a branch fellowship is because of your level and your thinking you are not the first to think like that when you learn that you will appreciate mentorship because you bring your mountain and somebody just walks on it and says, oh, I see this mountain, I remember 1981. Go and read the book. There is, there is a solution for that mountain. Oh man of God, our ministry is about to be thrown out now. We are owing 30 million. I said, just 30 million, I am compl complaining. In 91, we were owing 500 million. And then you now sit down. You are hearing a man talking to you and he says, look, let me tell you what to do. Pray, give a seed, and go to bed nothing is as bad as it is and then you conquer that i remember when one time um we held a little program and i was going thirty thousand thirty thousand i was sweating i didn't know what to do with my life thirty thousand it was from one book money somebody loaned us it was so terrible i remember the day it was even late dr bimbo dukoya's books when they brought her to zaria 2005 after organizing the program now very nicely his presence in worship are we together now there was no i mean the whole thing and they needed the money by nine o'clock nine o'clock by seven o'clock i don't i'm not sure i had up to 500 i was sweating around i didn't know what to do so now you are owing eight thousand and you are moving around my blood i, I think i'm having high blood pressure calm down calm down there is something preparation will teach you that you stand up and walk god is speaking to someone it is comforting to see those who have gone through what you are going through times 10 find out what they did to come out preparation and dotan became mighty unmovable let me tell you i have studied the life of men in ways you cannot imagine studying their life built great comfort in me many of them were 10 times as ignorant as i am now yet they were able to go through some things and i said no at this level i even know more there's no reason why i should fidget it will work to work you are not the first to get married you are planning for marriage and you just say ah, my budget is 1.5 eh? dr jenny 1.5 you are seeing a man with two children you will not ask questions sir two children means you married what happened what did you do you know see it's pride to think your problem is new to everybody it's pride what is a mountain to you is a valley to someone you are not the first to have carryover hey will i stay or will they drive me please go to bed there are people who have taught this land you are seeing left right and center to a point that they just look at the board and say glory be to god oh. Fear is as a result of ignorance. 
and it's partly a product of not preparing you have ignored the pain and the sacrifice of others somebody's pain you have ignored is why you are afraid today because if you buy their materials and study their lives you will learn their pain koinonia was not built in a day many of you have never cared to ask the story behind it because you don't care all you know is that you are enjoying there will be workers dinner and it's free paid for just dress well and come and say, I like going on here. I like a ministry that takes care of us like this there was a story there was a story behind it preparation you learn the principles of the kingdom preparation that's the time of trial and error please hear me that's the time when you are you are learning to handle the keys of the kingdom like a baby trying to hold a key and open a door you will use wrong keys you will use wrong keys it's in the place of preparation you will know how the anointing works so god will keep building you you will read the books you will listen to the messages then one day you and god will go on small it somebody will now say please pastor femi can you just pray for our little group and say ah me I mean you are even calling me pastor and then on that day you will pray some things will happen others will not happen you will first go with confidence you are fasted dry it's even dry you went for the meeting and then you go there before you start preaching somebody is already shouting and you're like eh that means this thing is easy then every other person you lay hands on now doesn't fall and you're saying what's the confusion I didn't lay hands on anybody somebody was shouting the ones are now in direct contact with the anointing so preparation you now go back in one message you are hearing you will hear a mystery that explains that operation say, ah this is what i did wrong you have learned you are learning you are learning are we together you are learning about finances god told you you'll be a multi-millionaire ceo all that you've held home and abroad in your entire life is hundred thousand and you are working one day god will give you it somebody will just send you four hundred thousand and say please can you keep it for me for two weeks and you find out your body is shaking you can't sleep you will get up you are moving up and down you say ah should i touch this money and pay back quickly you see a revelation that you are not qualified you are beginning to see the effect of money then you learn from that preparation that money is a spirit it's not just notes it can do something to you and you are now thinking 200,000 is in my account and I cannot sleep what will happen if 200 million is in my account then you begin to respect every man who you see sitting down he's a millionaire but he's drinking a bottle of water it took discipline to conquer that what are you, what are you ignoring by refusing preparation is God speaking to someone you are preparing you want to be a good wife in the process of preparation you will read a book and see that a man of God's wife she will now say God told me when God told me my husband did not yet know and God was sending me to women to go and cook with them and you say ah the Holy Spirit will tell you now go and do likewise you will now say ah Auntie Shade please can I come to your house just to help you and while you are washing place you are asking her questions and she's answering what happens when a great man is angry as a good wife how do you treat if your husband is a public figure how do you shield him you are not learning you are only saying this brother god has been speaking you are not seeing me you would never see you because god is not a wicked god to carry his servant laboring and just give you no you prepare you prepare say amen stop claiming things carelessly sit down and prepare and before you know it you will see them in your hands I respect people who are mighty yet understand the power of preparation there are people you see in this koinonia mighty men and women in the spirit very mighty you just see them quiet some of them have had one-on-one -on -one encounter with them their prayer life fire their word like fire the maturity and wisdom upon their life is uncommon nobody even knows them they are quiet God is preparing them one day you will just see God will carry one brother and give them and say ah, where is this one coming from are you joking nobody comes from nowhere people are preparing quietly you are the only one standing where pe prepared people are standing but you are not prepared 
I receive grace to prepare. Lift your voice and pray. I receive grace. Lord, I see how I've been shortchanging myself. I've been acting like I've arrived. I've been trying to look rich. I've been trying to look anointed. By this teaching tonight, oh God, I receive grace. Grace, koinonia, pray. I stop complaining about what is not working. I value the pain of those who have gone ahead of me. And I make up my mind to draw from them. Shakata baratakaya. Leke bronze talakoto subahaya. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. A pastor sent me a text and the pastor was really complaining. He said, man of God, God is increasing us in ministry. But right now I just discovered every other thing in my life has died. My prayer life has died. My word life has died. I still see miracles. I still see great things, but I'm so disorganized. I used to be an organized person. And I told him, I said, you are still using the mindset you, you were using when you were starting ministry. Are we together? Do you know what it means for a very busy person to still maintain his prayer life? There is a technique. It's not just as the spirit leads. There is a system. How do you maintain a prayer life? Reading chapters of the Bible. When from morning till night you are walking. How do you balance that? As an influential person. You are married with two, three children. How do you maintain your spiritual life? How do you maintain a good fatherhood? And a, you're a good husband. You are not the first to go through it. Find out. There are people who are flawlessly effective. Find out. There are men of God who preach five, six messages every week and everything is new. You want, you are already tired. Your little fellowship in one state somewhere, maybe just two or three branches and it's already killing you. Yet people like Dr. Paul Enche running six services every Sunday, two services every week, intermittently they can travel to Europe and come back in the morning find out there is a system. There is a system, otherwise it will kill you. John G. Lake did not understand that. He did well in ministry and died in his family life. What is the secret of men of God who are effective in family? Their schedules are packed full, everything. I remember when we started, I didn't know that there was a protocol department that handled ministrations and made things easy. I used to handle them by myself. You bring your letter, you come and give me. I look at it. I say, okay, let me go and pray about it. At a point, there were several letters. I said yes to many people. I'll say, yes, I'm coming to your church. Yes, I'm coming to your fellowship. I will not even remember. I found out that I had to prepare four, five messages in a week. It was weighing me down. I said, it's not like I don't have what to say, but I can't stand before God's people and preach what I know God is not leading me to say. I can preach any nice sermon, but will it be effective? Are we together? What do you not know? I'm drawing you to a point. Your pain today is because you have ignored preparation somewhere. Then I began to study. I got Bishop Oedeko's book, Towards Excellence in Life and Ministry. I got that Doug Hayward Mills book, Church Administration and Management. I got some of the Adela books, Pastoring Without Tears. I got some of these materials and sat down. When I began to study, I said, ah, so this is how it works. I've been killing myself for no reason. Are we together? Killing myself for no reason. I remember when I had to be under pressure to answer everybody's call. It was like I'm a receptionist. Somebody will call and say, is this apostle? I just want to know. And for five minutes, you are arguing with the person. Is this apostle? If it's not apostle, please don't waste my time. And it's my credit to... I'm now calling. I say, "Is apostle, say, to apostle, please, do you have time? Because what I'm about to tell you is, is boiling in my spirit. And I will now carry my big head and say, yes, I have time. And for 30 minutes, while you are talking, another text is entering, another call. And I find out that sometimes you can stay three hours. You are just answering call. And you are fagged out. You are fatigued. Someone who finishes work, he will work well, have a nice time with his wife, go to church and come back, then call you. That's when you now want to rest. Then others started calling by one or two because they found out that I don't sleep in the night. They will now call and say, Apostle, sorry, you. They just go ahead. I used to feel so guilty. If I'm sleeping and my phone is ringing, I feel so bad until I read a man of God's book. 
that delivered me now it can ring if it's an emergency call the police yeah call the police people would threaten me and say man of god pride pride you've not gotten anywhere you used to respond to us before you even used to send us recharge card but now you are you are getting arrogant i will feel so bad i'll say but god please search my heart until i found out that that's how people are it's not like they are just becoming it for me they are like that everywhere i just said ah please go to bed ah somebody's already gaining wisdom gaining wisdom so when you walk out of here and you say, see what she's wearing you say why does everybody hate me no you are not the only one it's like that you are just discovering it you are just discovering it i don't know why everybody talks about me everybody is there something wrong ah if if you are looking at your legs you will cut two of your legs because there are too many people who can talk ah god is giving us wisdom preparation 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 there are some of us married people people come to your house you are under pressure to cook for them and give them everything because let, let them not say we are not good let them say who oh. let them say because you will find lousy people they'll come to your house is there pepper soup in this house you will think they are joking they really mean it you will rush go to the market buy, buy cow you think it's just a joke you are not learning to grow up you need to listen to people who have learned to manage people like that Two o'clock, they'll come again. They'll say, sorry, oh, we are here again. Is there still something for us? Then you will read a book that one determined young man one day walked up to them and said, please, visitor, we have, we have a program in this house. There are times we have Bible study. There are times I'm just spending time with my wife. There are times we are spending time with the children. It is important to let us know you are coming. Man say, what is there? What do you think you are? Leave him. Let him go. Carry his trouble and go. At least you are free now. There is something you need to know to set you free. Most of this depression we are having is because there is something you don't know. So you sit down there and think people are talking about you. What will they be saying about me? What won't they say? Do well, they will talk. Don't do well, they will talk. So be used to it and enjoy your life. You see what preparation does for you. So you create a system of joy that is independent of the things around you. And you become a motivated leader. And everybody looks at you and says, wow, this guy is a leader worthy of emulation. Then your ministry increases because you have learned how to motivate people into excellence. Say amen. You have to learn the principles of the kingdom. Very quickly, there are four areas still under the second point. There are four areas that you must work on. Four areas that you must work on. Number one, you must contend for a comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom. Generally, as regards understanding the word of God and applying it. Understanding the word of God and applying it, you must contend for that mystery. You must know how to apply scripture to your life. If you want to be great, use your times of preparation to learn how to make the word of God work. Number two, you must contend for the secret to the anointing. In your place of preparation, you must find out. You cannot, um, it has nothing to do with ministry. You want to be great in life without knowing how the anointing comes, you are joking. So in your place of preparation, you have to find out. This anointing that has been responsible for the greatness of many, how does it come? Number three. You must find out principles of leadership and administration. I know you are a man of God. But you are going to have leaders. I know you are a businessman. But it will not always be popcorn forever. A day will come you have companies with offices. You must understand principles of leadership and administration. Number three, you must understand finances. You must, in your place of preparation, you must study finances. No matter how much of a man of God you are, a businessman, a father, you must, this is a tool. I'm mentioning for you the tools that you will use to fulfill destiny. 
you need it study on finances don't just be a money monger don't just be a hustler don't just be obsessed about money and business understand the system understand how this thing works understand the challenges the vicissitudes that surround it are we together number four the last thing you must understand is people and relationships people and relationships brothers and sisters if you don't understand people and relationships you will die like a chicken they asked bishop oyedeko years ago they said what's the greatest source of challenge and pain in your life he said people they said what's the greatest motivation in your life he said people do you know the reason for many discouragement is people what they have said the reason for your encouragement the same people you must understand people get my message understanding people mastering relationships and then the prophetic implication of association you have to learn that i got a book years ago that changed my life how to win friends and influence people by dale kennedy right it blessed me it opened my eyes to the psychology of human relationships it helped me understand people thoroughly to know how to relate with different kinds of people you need this in your life otherwise you will get a job and after two weeks you are angry with everybody because you will meet sarcastic people even as a man of God you are going to meet people in your church people who are very disloyal to you you need to learn what to do with them you are going to meet people who are very anointed but rebellious you are going to meet people who are very submissive but careless and less as fair all these people you have to work with them you get a job you are going to work with lazy people you are going to work with very corny people people who are corny they will bribe and kill you if need be for promotion you've got to understand the ethics of working with people maintaining relationships number three the last point action the last key to opening up your prophetic destiny is action the power of action so number one is an encounter with Jesus number two is the power of preparation number three is action the power of sustained action now by action I don't just mean movement action means the relevant steps that you take action takes courage write it down when you are about to take action over your life your business your ministry it takes courage to act brothers and sisters there are things you are going to be doing in your life you will be the first person to do it in your entire family it takes action it takes courage joshua chapter one he said be strong and of good courage nobody has ever gone to school in your family you are the first to do it there is fear i was i was talking with, i can't remember who i was talking with now we're discussing the subject of fear and i told him there are two dimensions of fear there is fear as a result of the presence of the spirit of fear there is fear as a result of stepping into the unknown you must distinguish them are we together now there is the fear as it is as the presence of a demon spirit you cast that one out god has not given us that spirit of fear but every time you are doing something new or something extraordinary that that ability to push through something that is new will bring fear it's not unusual there are many of us here who have gone through certain sustained seasons of preparation but action action are we together you are the first person in your house to get a job and for many months you have not submitted an application because you are used to everything being done free for you are we together you've not submitted any application and the lord is telling you stand up and go to benin and submit your application say ah god no 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 no. who is going to pay my money where am i going to stay you have to summon courage to get up and take bold steps in life are we together courage courage action requires persistence there are certain times your first step will be the wrong one but it doesn't mean you are wrong the step may be wrong but you are not wrong start the business start the church start the ministry
action requires courage action requires persistence there is an ugly ideology in the church that the moment people start things and fail people rally around them are you sure it's God and they destroy people's destinies how many great businesses would have stood but for the advices from churches how many great destinies there are people who who left who left certain precious jobs that God gave them simply because of an advice if they are shouting at you like that is he worth it and then you leave it and now you are suffering are we together number three action requires a system now this is very important you don't just act carelessly you act based on a system you build a system you build a system around your action for instance when it's now time for you God has called you and God has anointed you and told you it's time you now sit down there, there is a system you can start a prayer group a prayer fellowship as God is bringing people they are getting healed they are getting blessed God is lifting you God is bringing people into your life most of the people God is bringing are not your members stop calling them your members and sons and daughters they are your leaders in the making are we together God never sends members he sends leaders they will come as drunkards they will come as troublemakers your assignment is to prove your apostleship make them become what you have seen in the vision they will not come ready-made action you must build a system around it we had a system like that when he and I was starting we'll get people born again there was a system you got filled with the Holy Spirit and then we were praying and so when people got born again in one week they were already on fire a system around your business you may now say okay let me now build a system I separate business money from my personal finances maybe I open an account for business I need to be serious now not that any money that comes is for the eating you don't know which one is for your shop which one is for you so you eat everything and then you calculate and say somebody is stealing somewhere no no so I remember 100,000 enter why is there 60,000 you ate it it's your account system all the great empires in the world all the great destinies that you see the uncommon lives in ministry in politics in influence in any area of life were built this way this is the way people become great they have an encounter with Jesus that encounter brings them to a submission to his values and the next thing they they plant themselves under a ministry or a platform or a spiritual family are, are you getting the progression now this so that when you get people born again you know what to do with them when people have an encounter with Jesus the next assignment is to create a structure or plant them under the Bible says they that be planted in the house of God they shall flourish in the courts of our God he said in old age they shall be fat and flourishing hallelujah just like you are seated now now you are hearing this you are taking steps based on what I'm teaching you will go back now and because there is an anointing upon what I'm saying you will not ignore it as you go back it will burn like fire in your spirit you begin to make decisions that are consistent with it are we together now and you begin to see your life rise you begin to see yourself improve then you can know that I'm going to be a good man not just because I think I am good I have studied the system that makes men good then I know I'm going to be a blessed man not just because I hate poverty I've studied the system I know I'm going to be extraordinarily anointed not just because I'm, I want to gyrate myself no, 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 no I've understood the system at that point you can look at life and smile it's called mastery you can rise to a point where you look at life and smile and know that I have a great destiny I have a great destiny and you look at your life after 20 30 years and it's nothing short of a life of glorious impact on eagle's wings a book written by bishop david Oedipo, i think to celebrate the 30 years anniversary of living faith then or so i looked at everything the progression on how he started and i said this is it consistent i have studied many great men of god that's how they started Benny Hinn, Dr. Mike Mudok, 
Miles Munro, all the great men that represent great mentors and fathers in my life. I look at their lives and I see consistently, consistently. There were times in their lives they were for many years. It's like things did not happen. Even living faith with the kind of speed that it is experiencing now, there was a time it was stagnated. So you find out because at this point your ministry is not moving. So you go back. What did they do? Oh, they fasted. They prayed. They met together as leaders. They readjusted certain things. Fine. Papa Ia Deboe, there was a time redeemed was doing well but it was taunted and God told him that redeem needed to get to all the nations but as it were redeem could not cross certain cultures it could not go beyond the south and he went to the Lord and then the Lord gave him a formula he gave him a secret let him know that when you are dealing with global leadership you must have respect for people's culture and ideology it's quite selfish to want people to completely bend to subscribe to your culture kingdom culture yes but your, your sociological culture and paradigm, it may not be possible with every place. And so he opened up and painfully created that flexibility. So you can see one redeemed branch that looks like a contemporary um, uh, um, church and all of that. And then you see another redeemed branch, youthful, another redeemed branch, still, you know, holding on to certain values. He just focused on the core values that represented the foundation of the ministry to preserve it. But then gave the flexibility and now redeemed is everywhere. Festival of life in UK is as if, I mean, you see them everywhere there. France, everywhere redeemed because of that secret. You can now look at that. Why is my church not growing? Ah, and God opens your eyes through that light, and you now see it. Oh, the reason why my church is not growing is because um, I, I I hold on to my values, but probably I I impose every value, both spiritual, cultural, sociological, on people, and that value is restraining people. That may be just the key you need to adjust, and then all of a sudden. You find out that your ministry becomes a habitable place for people. Action. Action. God is challenging some of us to take action. You need to take action over your finances. You need to take action. There are different action steps you can take. You can begin to read books every day. You can listen to messages every day. You can get up and subscribe to direct mentorship. As much as God grants you grace. You may need to settle down and tell yourself, I'm starting that business next month. I'm starting it. I have prepared. I have paid my price. I am starting it. I will start it. Or you can say this month of November is dedicated to scattering my CVs around. I will anoint it. I will pray. I brought it for miracle service. They have prayed for it. Now God is waiting on me. I will scatter it all around. Hallelujah. Action. We are enjoying koinonia today because of the power of action. We are enjoying what God has done today because of the power of action. Listen, when will the generations tied to your grace reap the benefits of the action you are taking or otherwise? Whether or not you move, time is moving. Whether or not you move, time is moving. It is important to move with it. Time is premium. The only way to redeem it is to use it well. You don't save time. You use it well. You redeem it by investing properly in it. Koinonia, I bring you a word today. There is a prophetic destiny for you in Christ. You have been escorting men. Some of you, after tonight, you've got to sit down. Brothers, look at me. After tonight, some of you, when you go back home, don't sleep. You need to carry a chair and sit down outside and just carry a clean sheet of paper and say what am i doing with my life this is not the way it's supposed to work you have been joking around your destiny you are getting old things are not working there is nothing working in your life finances you don't know anything about it fatherhood you don't know anything about it that sense of maturity leadership you've not built anything time is going you have to give yourself a sense of urgency a day will come god will demand accountability for the grace and the life and the power and the strength that he has given you he said i must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day for the night cometh it's time for you to begin to study the bible 
it's time for you to begin to study the Bible. You want to become a great man of God. You don't know the Bible. You're going to crash land. You will be tired. Your members will be weary. They will leave your church and go somewhere else. Simply because you do not have the word. You are not instant in season. He tapped Elijah and said, eat for the journey is far. I want to round up. Are you preparing? Are you preparing for your life? Sister, are you looking for a man or are you preparing for marriage? Brother, do you want to marry by fire, by force or are you preparing? Marriage means a wife. Marriage means children. Marriage means the troubles that can come from in-laws. Have you positioned your spirit to manage it? Marriage means leadership. I want to start a business. CEO. CEO of what? Have you studied it? I want to become a great man of God. I want to be president and founder or geo. All that one is stories. Uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. Are we together? Listen. I made a decision years ago. Today now makes it, um, not today, but 2016 makes it uh, 14 years 14 years when I made a quality intentional decision now I'd been working with God I'd been doing certain things but when I made up my mind to do what I'm teaching you now 14 years ago so when you see this today it's a product of 14 years of consistency with the Holy Ghost there were many other things that had happened before that time but I made up my mind. I said, from today, I will not be irresponsible. From today. I started studying and making a decision over my finances and my journey 12 years ago. Two years after I started my journey with purpose, I started my journey with finances. Listen, not every time is conducive for everything. You must redeem the time. You hear me saying this thing redeem the time please don't let anybody just come to your house and come and waste your time with gisting and gossiping that does not make sense early in the morning you are supposed to be praying six o'clock there in your house because you stay in the same compound bros how you day then please please don't, what, what is that shout please i'm happy today is a glorious day take it easy Bros, you don't cook, you don't do this, just speaking, tell him, please, I plan to be a leader. Take it easy. All these, your vulgar statements and the rest, I appreciate you, but take it easy. Don't come to my house and come and do everything you want to do. No. You behave. Action. You begin to dress well. You begin to be serious about your life. Are we together now? Yeah. Actions that reflect your destiny. You stop excessively spending money anyhow. These are action steps that some of you need to take. Make up your mind that from today, no fake life. I'm not ashamed. If all I can take is Gary now, I'm not going to say others are taking rice. Uh -uh. By God's grace, I will take Gary honorably. Any lady that cannot like me taking Gary now does not deserve to eat my rice with me. I will continue moving. No pressure. No pressure. God has given me two members. I will guard them jealously and teach them with all my heart and love them. No competition. Are we together now? I open an account. I'm saving. I am disciplined. Can't be a student and you are buying with one of 10,000, 15,000. It's not wise. You are destroying your future. That 15,000 can buy you a book. 15 plus one secret to a happy home. I think something like that. Uh, uh, Doctor, Mrs. Energy, 500 naira, 1,000. You change your life. Are we together? God blesses you with 10,000 naira. You go and buy materials and dress well. Dress well. You don't look irresponsible. Please, I'm challenging us. We are going to pray. But I need to be sincere with you. You look well. You dress smart. You start learning certain ethics. When you are going before the presence of a great man, you don't look foolish. You destroy yourself. Now you begin to learn that not every opportunity opens every time. There are some of you here, brothers, you don't have one good suit. One good suit. 
you can budget for it one good suit so that the day God opens a door you have something nice you keep wearing all these rags that people wear around looking like fools and then you smile around it no you will never be great that way are we together you come to a point in your life where you begin to act responsibly when you see ladies you respect them you don't talk like a fool speak everything and no 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 no. you act like you are preparing to get married there are some of you i see you you are still acting like children although you are matured you begin to act responsibly you see someone's child falling down you create a sense of responsibility oh let me help this person you are taking action that is opening doors for you you see a man that is anointed you don't just stand let's see what he's saying pastor Alpha, what does he even have to say no the law of honor see there is a way you look at someone you know he has grown up you know he has grown up are we together let's take steps for our destiny you may not like what i'm teaching you tonight but just like others who are saying thank you now you will say thank you tomorrow i guarantee you you may not like me for what i'm teaching you now because for some of you i'm challenging you listen there are some of you especially ladies because you are very beautiful your beauty makes it such that anybody who comes around you likes you so there's nobody to really tell you the truth my name is joshua selman i'm telling you you have to settle down and be serious with your life you cannot float around a destiny full of flattery somebody has got to tell you this is wrong this is right the person who challenges you is the person who loves you. God is using me to do for us now what some of us did not get at home. And I will do it well. You may not, if you like, don't hate me, no problem. But you will thank me tomorrow. I love you too much to leave you the way you are. Stop all this childish play. Stop all these this irresponsible things people do around. Gossiping around, misbehaving. Some of you, are, you have already collected phone on credit. Go and return it. You don't need that kind of lifestyle. Oh, please, hey, Jimmy, uh, can I use your trouser for two weeks? No, you are, you are acting like a child. Can I use your shirt? I like your phone. Can you borrow me? I'm traveling somewhere. All these things are attitudes of children. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I acted like a child. I spoke like a child. Now that I'm a man, what do I do? I lay aside these childish things. Have you laid aside these childish things? Or are you just growing old? Maturity. Let me come into your room or your house or whatever and see it nice. I look at you and I see how careful you are. I don't come into your house and I see your fridge spoiled, your TV spoiled, your table dirty, your carpet dirty. And I just see you and you say, Ah, Apostle, you are welcome. May his presence. No, no, no. You are not showing responsibility. That's the same way you will be an irresponsible man. The fridge will spoil you. Say my wife will fix it. You are not already assuming responsibility. God cannot give you a great ministry. You can't fix your fridge of 1,000 naira. You want to fix lives? No, sir. Are we together? You wear clothes that are torn and dirty. You don't care? No, sir. You have to behave well. Say in the name of Jesus. From today, I make up my mind that I will fulfill destiny say it again from today I make up my mind that I will fulfill destiny give me two more minutes and then we'll pray how about bad friends I can't round up without talking about that show me your association and I show you your true values show me your association whether you went to the same primary school, secondary school, he was your chief, um, 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 your, your best man, whatever. <laughs> Sam is love you guys. What does he say, chief bridesmaid? Praise God. All this solidarity to wrong friends, you've got to make up your mind. You see, I've been saying this thing. Do you know some of us, if only you can leave your bad friends, your journey to a good life starts. Especially for us ladies especially for us ladies you love god but the moment you meet them they come with their wrong ideologies and then they force you to have to believe it 
You just came back from church and now you are making up your mind, I will be responsible. And someone goes, hey, this day, oh, ladies, can I sit down? You know that's what you just repented of. But because of the presence of that friend, he said, Todd, just tell me. And you now keep listening. Before you know it, you go back to your vomit again. May God deliver you this night. The courage to let people know you are serious about your destiny. See, I don't know what is it. This our ego thing is what we have refused to take out of the way. If I tell this person, sorry, you are interrupting my destiny, they will feel bad. They will criticize me. So what? So what? Make up your mind. Are we together? Make up your mind. This night, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, make up your mind and say things will change. I pray that you will really change. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that you will really change. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are many other things we need to change about. Some of you have up to 20 relationships. Consciously, you don't care. To you, it's a symbol that you are a fine girl. Say, do you know all these guys are dying? I guarantee you, none of them will marry you. For you to be that careless with your life, they will ask you out. But when they are ready to marry, they will come to church. The brother will repent and dress well and come and look for a quiet lady who loves God. Every man, stupid or sensible, wants peace in his house. Are we together? Yeah. So some of us pride ourselves. There are good brothers coming. They love God. They fear God. They are coming. But you are there busy doing your emotional razzmatazz with all kinds of people. You are growing old. God will open doors for the brothers. The brothers you see today that cannot buy a good shoe, they will buy what will open your mouth tomorrow. And by that time, they will not be ready to marry you. They will marry people younger than you. Don't be angry. I'm sorry I'm saying this, but I'm challenging you. And brothers, don't think what I've said now is a license for you to be foolish. Because some of you deserve no almost forever until you do something with your life. Please, don't, don't ever use what I'm saying now as an endorsement to come and harass any lady. If you don't merit saying any no, um, they will bring you to me. You are going to meet me somewhere in the equation. I will meet and I will tell you, no, no. You are not, you are not responsible enough. It's as simple as that. She may not have the courage to tell you, but I guarantee you I will tell you. You know why I'm doing this to you tonight? I came with this spirit of fatherhood tonight because I, I want to challenge you. You're on your way to better days. You're on your way to better days. Every marriage you see here, by God's grace, some of our people here who are gloriously married, there were steps they took. Some of the things you are seeing here, the lives that are successful in ministry, by God's grace, you belong to a ministry that God has helped. These are the things that we do. They are not what we are saying. They are things that we do. He said, that which you have seen me do among many witnesses, do also. Do also. Be serious with your life. I can count the number of times you will come to my place and find me sleeping, sleeping, snoring, any time of the day. I'm awake doing something. There are sermons to prepare. There are videos to watch. I am, I am so passionate about eradicating my ignorance. So passionate. Please rise up on your feet. your way to paradise. Three prayer points. Please, no moving around. We're going to pray. This is part of the meeting. I want you to pair yourselves into two. And let's just take five minutes to really pray. If you're married, please, you can hold your wife or husband or whatever and pray because this is serious prayer we're going to pray now. Shaka barata sopra Lift your voice and begin to pray in the spirit in one minute. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will. Lo, I come in the volume of the book 
pray in the spirit. Shake up a ratabadawa. Let it take you to Braska Baradabalabash. Embrace the take a telecata Baradabalaba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Lord, I vow, I make a covenant with my destiny, a covenant of seriousness and purposelessness. From today, I make up my mind to be serious and to be purposeful. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Young and old, male and female, those following online, I enter a covenant with my destiny. I must fulfill destiny from tonight. I decree and declare in the name of the Lord Jesus. No more joking. No more playing games in my life. Shaka to kapara na bala na bala na bos. Embre teke te shkola ba 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 ba. Rakata rakata la bata. Seke te teke te ne bos. Hallelujah. Please make sure you pray. Those outside, make sure you pray. Something is happening. Prayer point number two. You are going to pray and say, Lord, every knowledge I need, every light I need to prepare me for an extraordinary life please reveal it to me lift your voice and pray the information I need access to light are you praying take away ignorance financial ignorance ministerial ignorance Leadership ignorance. Take it away from my life. Spiritual ignorance. I bring it to the cross and I decree and declare that there's supernatural grace to work it out. To work it out. To work it out. Prayer point number three. Prayer point number three. Oh God. The spirit of laziness and inertia, that spirit that refuses me from being diligent, I curse it right now in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and pray. I challenge laziness, spiritual laziness, mental laziness, physical laziness, wanting something for nothing. I curse that spirit. Grace to be diligent. To be valuable, grace to invest in myself. Shekroto so para tava la 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 la. Rebeke te koto so para tava la 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 la. Alleluia. Alleluia. Two more prayer points, Father. Destroy premature the appetite for premature manifestation. Manifestation when I'm not ready. Destroy that appetite from my life. Lift your voice and pray. Pray. Premature manifestation in business. Premature manifestation in ministry. Premature manifestation in family life. Premature manifestation in leadership. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace to prepare like Jotham. I prepare my ways before the Lord. And so I work strong and mighty. Grace for preparation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point before I pray for you. The courage, the discipline, 
and the diligence to take necessary action because some of you the season you are in now is the season of action you can't prepare forever you've got to step that spirit of fear that lack of courage what will people say i like you to lift your voice and destroy it right now lift your voice and pray lord it's time to take action over my finances it's time to take action over family life it's time to take action in ministry the action that will move me over my career over my job it's time to take action Please lift your hands let me pray for you I want to pray for you sincerely from my heart I want you to believe it God sees my heart whom I serve and God knows that my greatest desire listen my greatest desire I have always frowned at the leadership paradigm that makes one person a superstar shining while the rest are helplessly everybody can shine it will not kill the honor of the leader if you are a true leader, even in the greatness of the people you have raised, they will honor you and give you your place. There are many leaders who are not passionate. I made a vow with God when I started ministry. When Koinonia started, I've shared it with you. I will never pastor people who are not influential. I believe you can be anointed. You can be spirit-filled. You can be responsible. You can be financially free. You can be influential and useful in the kingdom. You do not have to choose one area. You can choose everything. You don't have to choose prayer and the word and neglect responsibility. You don't have to choose excellence and responsibility and neglect the ministry of the spirit. All of them are supposed to be complementary. So all these teachings that you see, I bring them, some of the teachings are hard, but they are designed to file our lives into action. The Bible says, iron sharpeneth iron. Are we together now? So as you receive this word, don't sit down arguing it. Don't be offended by it if it strikes you. The idea is to receive it into your spirit as the word from God. And know that this is coming from a leader that is passionate about your success. If I see you today excelling and doing great things for the kingdom, it's my fulfillment. You give me money today, I'm blessed, but I mean, what do I do with that one? But if I see your life transformed, you're a great man of God doing mighty things for the kingdom. That's my source of joy. My paradigm is not outshining people and having people struggling around. And then one superstar called Joshua Selman. My desire is to be the least even among everybody rising. It still will not destroy my worth. Lift your hands. In the name that is above all names, I pray for you. The grace that God supplied in my life that granted me the discipline to prepare. I am still preparing. But the discipline to have started that journey regardless of the challenges, I pray for you. May that grace come upon your life. The spirit of indiscipline and carelessness I declare that it lives your life this night and forever. Some of you, the spirit of slumber and gluttony, food and sleep that is robbing your destiny, be free from it this night. Some of you, inferiority complex, the, the pressure to look successful, the pressure to belong, is making you to do a lot of things you've done too many foolish things the change comes for you now some of us the pressure of association i want to become like my friends my contemporaries that that pressure to to fit in a group that is destroying you i command that pressure to leave you right now For some of you, the embarrassment to start again. The embarrassment to start again. 
after life has whipped you your business may have failed your ministry may have failed your career may have failed you um, you applied for a job you try to ask a lady out the, the, the courage in the name of Jesus I declare that grace for you again in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you may you begin to access deeper levels of revelation may God lead you to the books may God lead you to the messages may God lead you to the conferences where your anointing and your wisdom is waiting for you in the name of Jesus Christ whatever you do not know now that is responsible for your fears responsible for your concerns I pray that the light of God's word will swallow it right now the grace to go back to your drawing board the unashamedness to carry those books you used to write in that you have thrown away those dreams you used to write in some of you had books God used to speak to you every night but just because of little results you threw them may you go back and get those books again the culture listen the healthy spiritual culture you observe that brought you this far I release grace for you to continue it some of you the prayer life that brought you this far you have left it now the word study life the humility that brought you this far you have left it the sense of honor for authority that brought you this far you have left it please whatever you have left that you should not leave I command get back to it in the name of Jesus I speak over your life what has not been done in your family the limitations that they have put and say this family cannot cross this I prophesy to you you are the one who will cross that barrier in the name of Jesus and I speak finally to everyone here who is discouraged drop your hands down I'm speaking to you there are people here who are discouraged are saying apostle I have tried things are not working as I'm standing right now I don't even know the name of what I'm doing with my life nothing is working finances zero marriage zero school zero work zero nothing is working I feel as if I should just die I bring you a word from the Lord he said is there hope for a tree right even if it be cut off he said there is hope for it at the scent of water the water of the word of God that you are hearing tonight may hope come alive I release upon you the courage some of you have thrown the button I want you to take it back and say no I will make it I will make it like an Olympic person who has been handed over the battle and now you left it the problem is if you leave it all the other people who gave it to you will also be failures because of you so you have to finish it grace to finish well in the name of Jesus Christ now very quickly before we round up please keep standing everybody no moving around there are people here you've heard the word that I've said please keep standing everybody there are people here you have heard the word of the Lord and while I was teaching listen please the Holy Ghost began to speak to you and said apostle is talking about you you need to make your ways right with Jesus two groups in one some of you have actually made a decision for Jesus at one point in your life but there is complete spiritual unseriousness and lukewarmness based on my definition here you see that you are not born again you may have come to recite a prayer but sincerely you have not submitted to the values of the kingdom and then there are those who have never truly made a confession for Jesus you've been around Christian things but as you began to hear me teach the spirit of God told you this is it this is where I've been trying to lead you you are a great man you are a great woman this is where I've been trying to lead you I'm going to give you a few minutes our time is up and wherever you are there are many people outside I believe many people inside and thousands following us online the beginning of your journey to destiny starts with an encounter with Jesus. I want you to please walk out here. Don't waste our time. No sitting and thinking about it. I want you to walk and come here and say, man of God, pray for me. I want to start all over again. God bless you. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. 
I know you heard the word. I know the Holy Ghost spoke to you. Rebels don't run away from him. Rebels don't come to him. Sorry. They run away from him. Keep coming. No cajoling. No cajoling. Jesus is calling you. Those outside who are waiting for you. Don't say we came with a family. They are seeing me. Tonight is nobody's business. Those online, you may not be able to walk and come here, but I guarantee you, you can open up your heart. You are about to make a decision for Jesus. He said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my father. I still believe there are more people. I still believe there are more people outside. There are still more people who need to make up their minds and say, Jesus, I come to you genuinely. I'm tired of faking it. I mean business with you. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, brothers and sisters. Look at me. That I'm leading you to make this decision does not mean I'm better than you in any way. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. It is a genuine decision that will begin your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Do not be ashamed. Listen, I'm serious with what I'm saying. There are still two people outside. The Holy Spirit is telling me they have to come out here. Come out. Come and join them now. Come and join them. There are still two people outside. The Holy Spirit is speaking to me. There are two people outside, 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 outside. The Holy Ghost, please don't waste our time. God is speaking to me. There are two people outside that you should come and join. I'm just giving you the word. Whether or not you come is up to you and God. But the Lord is telling me there are two people that he has spoken to them. Come and join them quickly, quickly. Now, those of you in front, listen. God bless you for your courage. Hallelujah, listen. God does not condemn. Men condemn. Religious systems condemn. But in Koinonia, the first of our core value is love. I don't care what you have done. I don't care how bad it has been. God can give you a new beginning. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But make sure that your coming out here is not an emotional decision. The grace and the strength of God is available for you. But you must make up your mind. Lift your right hand to heaven. Jesus is here watching you. Take away Joshua Selman from your mind and see Jesus, the Lord of your life, giving you a new beginning right now. Say after me, seriously and sincerely, say, Jesus, I have come to you, the only one who can help me. This night, I hand over my life to you. I've tried managing it by myself and it has not worked. Tonight, I hand over my life to you. Be my savior, say it. Be my Lord. I receive eternal life into my spirit. And I declare that from today, I open up my heart for change. I open up my heart for transformation. I declare that I'm a child of God I am born again. The things I used to do, I do them no more. The grace of God is at work in me. Keep your hands lifted. Father, these ones have come sincerely from their heart. Some of them are crying. They have come before you, the fountain of life. Some of them are giving their hearts to Jesus for the first time. Some of them have heard me speak and they are making a genuine decision. Lord, I stretch my hands towards them. I decree and declare that the power of sin, the power of the flesh, the power of darkness is broken over their life. They have exercised their will. May your spirit find expression in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. From today, grace for you to live a victorious life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for making this great decision. I want you to follow someone. There's a gentleman waving his hands. Please, all of you in concert, just follow him. They will have their, your details and will follow you up. And then, please hold on. Tuesday, on Tuesday, Tuesday this week now, please, by 4 o'clock, all of you should be around for our prayer meeting at um, Rema, 4 o'clock Tuesdays. When people get born again, the system here is that you should... Be part of the prayer department for at least one month. It will help your spiritual life. Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you. Appreciate them, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. 
understand In all your ways acknowledge Him And He shall direct you 